All right, Bang Bang, today is Monday. It's September 12th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. It's Snake Draft Monday, and we are joined by a second-time guest who really just came out of the scene and just stole the show last Hall of time. Famer. Yeah. Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. I wish you saw That was unintentional. That was all at my expense. I didn't want that. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Chris, I was Chris Berman in a car shield commercial. That's 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 just a good you pick. You know, those, those freaking things are still on. <laughs> you believe that? Now there's another company doing I just saw it this morning. There's another company I never heard of doing it. Um, Eddie, how long ago was he on? That was last summer. So it was a so, year ago. Oh, it was goddamn time yeah. flies. Do you have an updated list over the last year or so of things you would like to get off your chest or mm-hmm. grieve about? Yeah, grievances. Well, that- well, I could do that too, but I think we're talking about things that have gone down, right, Eddie? That's yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. If you want to do grievances, I you put me in on another hour or so. I have a lot of grievances. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He Sounds does. like you have grievances with this show a little bit too. No, no, okay. I love you. You know something? I'm going to tell you the truth. There are very few, only a couple, one of which I have mentioned to Eddie, and we won't talk about it. But everybody else, and even that person, I don't have anything against that person. But most of the people I've dealt with, I find to be very nice and agreeable, and people I like to talk to, except this one person. I'm, we're not going to use any names. And even that person I don't like. I just don't see it. I don't understand why that individual is associated with Pascal. But it's not my problem. <laughs> Yeah, we are, are you I, talking about your son? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'm no, I, I'm. If you think I'm afraid to say anything negative about my son, you're drinking. <laughs> I, I have no problem. With it. Eddie will tell you, I have no problem criticizing my son, and I do see a lot of things I can criticize him for. Mm-hmm. No, we uh, we we talk on the phone a good about a good amount. I would say, yeah, Eddie and I, mm-hmm. yeah. And he last two weeks ago, he he just asked me. He said, "Hey, what's the deal with this person? I don't like him." <laughs> and I I'm sworn to secrecy. I will never say. Thank you, but that wouldn't have been good, Eddie, if you started giving names. It's up. Whitney, isn't never. it? Never. No, 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 you wouldn't guess. <laughs> I, I don't want to talk. I'm not here to talk about that. Mm-hmm. But so, if you call me up personally, I'll tell you. <laughs> would it, would it surprise people? Uh, what? Would it, would it surprise people? We shouldn't be talking about this. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is going to take us down a path that we shouldn't go down. That's oh, true. That's oh, true. okay, yeah. okay. You know what? Never mind. I don't know if it would. No, maybe, maybe. No, maybe. Nope. Uh, but anyways, like you, like like we said, today is going to be the things that have gone downhill, things that used to be better draft, and these topics are random. There was in no way shaped and formulated for you, right? Because it seems like something you could get on your, you know, your your pedestal on a little bit, Mister uh, Porter. Right. But you know, I'm excited. I appreciate for it. that. Mm-hmm. I appreciate. That. I'm just in such a good mood. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for this draft. I, I when and Eddie told you guys, I'm going to make a prediction. Most of you kids aren't going to have any idea what the heck I'm talking about. So I'm going to do it anyway. That's the beauty. That's what, mm-hmm. you know, Car Shield commercials with Chris Berman. Yeah. And I, you know, there's a danger here. I don't want to sound like the guy, the old guy says, get off my lawn. But I think that's where I'm probably going to be headed here. <laughs> that we want you to head wherever you're going to head. Yep. I bet that's you will be go. in full agreement with a lot of things you you draft today. Maybe all. I didn't hear you. Say, say that again. I bet you that we're all in full agreement with all the things that that you're going to be drafting. I don't know because I think a lot of you folks aren't, don't aren't familiar with what I have lived through. I, I, That's might. fair. Very fair. It's true. Ed's already cracked. I'm excited. To see. I mean, it's the hardest I've ever laughed on a po- laughed on a podcast. The, I thought yeah, we were going to have to resuscitate you. Expense, yeah. That was all of my expense. Which you I can't. know something. Those th- to be honest with you, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. I know I'm not trying to be funny, but people are crying and laughing, so that's really not a good thing on me, I guess. <laughs> no, no, no. It just there was just something that really got me that you stepped to the plate, and of all the things you could have complained about in mitts. your life, it was a guy from uh, Sports Network doing a commercial in a grocery <laughs> store, not being able to walk yeah. up, slap a money down exactly, yeah, and walk yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the first, you want me to start here? With this? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. We gotta get, we gotta get. We have, the, we have procedures. We gotta get the stakes into the field. Okay, so here's what we'll okay. do. All right, we're gonna get the order. Okay. Okay. Um, 
The, so, so uh, <laughs> cousin Mike, our we have a producer Tom. He's over there. He has a number between one through five behind his back. Can you guess what it is? One. No. Carl, can you guess? Four. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll take the I'll take the fifth spot. Okay, Chief. One through four. Three. Yeah. I'll take the fourth spot. Dave, one through uh, three. One. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to take first. Okay, me, one or two. Uh, I'm going to say one. No. Uh, all right. Uh, Mr. Portnoy, um, do you want the second or third spot? I'm already confused. <laughs> 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 I knew that was coming. I, I knew that. just <laughs> looking at it. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't kick it back to him to say one or two because I, I, I didn't want to do that. Too. That was nice of you. Why did you just make it up, all right, Tom? All right, all right. Just tell me when I should speak. All, all right. right, all right. Do you, all right. So if you, all right, just give him two. You'll, you'll take number two. Okay. This is. This will be great. And I'll be number three spot. Okay. So that I, I, this is the order, Mr. Portnoy. It's White Sox, Dave. It's you, then it's me, then it's Chief, then it's Carl, okay? All right. All right. Um, before we kick things off, though, I do want to talk about the sponsor of this show. That sponsor is Miller Lite. We love Miller Lite out here. Uh, every moment is made that much better with Miller Lite because everyone loves beer uh, that actually tastes like beer. With great taste and only 96 calories, Miller Lite is brewed with beer lovers in mind because Miller Lite is for those who actually want to taste their beer. Um, because it should taste like beer, like I said, it should not taste like water. Um, I mean, it's football season, everybody's ready to go. And uh, if you're not watching the Bears with a nice ice cold Miller Lite in your hands, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, it's a perfect, a perfect pair, some would say, White Sox, Dave. It really is. There's, it's the peanut butter and jelly, yin and yang, beer and football. Beer I also football. want to put this out there that I objectively, there, there's no amount of like money anybody can spend to influence any of this. Truly and sincerely, of the, of all the domestics, it's the most flavorful. And thousand most percent, great. Yeah. Yeah. Thousand percent, great. Uh, so next time you're getting ready to enjoy cold ones with your crew, go to MillerLight.com forward slash Redline to find the delivery options near you. Or you can pick up Miller Lite pretty much anywhere that they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ninety six calories and three point two carbs per twelve ounces. All right, here we go. We're underway. White Sox, Dave, take us away with the number one overall pick. Before I take my pick, I would like to say I had a conversation with Chief to my left and Ed to my right, and we, Chief and I sort of disagreed on the direction of this draft. Ed and I were almost in complete agreement on the direction of this draft. Which is rare. Which is very rare. And with that said, I I opted to take the first pick because I know this is a very chalk pick and I want to hear what everybody else has to say afterwards over the next 10 picks before it gets back to me. Um, so it can open up my creative side of my brain. With that said, I'm going to draft ESPN. Yeah, I, would, I, I want a number one that was going to be my number one overall. And it was actually when I was explaining to Mr. Portnoy about what this how, how it works again, I used ESPN as, as an example. Remember that, Mr. Portnoy? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You can't remember that? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> you got to understand. You got to understand. I can understand something that happened. I remember things that happened 20 years ago. Yesterday, not so much. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Well, uh, that's very fair. That's well, very fair. Well, we know you have your opinion about many uh, employees. I do. That I do. So what do you think about ESPN? Is it worthy of going the first pick in a downhill, things that used to be better draft? So that really leads me to the question, of, are there things that are worse, right? That's the way to analyze that. Are there things that are worse than ESPN? I can say this. I'm no longer a lover of ESPN. I don't watch it that much. Uh, but is it the worst thing that I can think of? It hasn't been the same since uh, Stuart Scott died. Yeah. What's that? It has not been the same since Stuart Scott's passed. Since he passed away. Well, see, we disagree. There. That was. <laughs> I got in a lot of trouble for saying this, especially when we just talked about the Queen. So this is kind of a similar thing. 
Mm -hmm. I was not a Stuart Scott fan. (laughs) And I said that right after he died. Jesus Christ. And I I prefaced it by saying, I know this is kind of sacrilegious. You shouldn't do this. And he's getting all this praise left and right. I was entitled to say, I don't, and he had a family. I don't, didn't wish him any, you know, heartache. Yeah, he died of cancer, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Terrible, terrible thing. But. I still could compartmentalize what I thought about him as a broadcaster and his right to have a decent life with children. I thought he sucked as a broadcaster. I didn't like him. And Eddie will tell you, if nothing else, I am not a phony. I'm not going to all of a sudden start to praise Stuart Scott when I didn't like him as a broadcaster. Did I wish him any hard luck? Do I wish anybody that unfortunately has cancer and had and died and left the family obviously not but that doesn't mean i have to all of a sudden say he was great because right. i didn't like him yep as a broadcaster so you think espn's gotten better since he died of cancer better no i no, yeah, that's not, i would say the best way i can answer that is i think his death is irrelevant to that question all right i think espn is deteriorated because I'll be honest with you, I think they got too much time to fill. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's so repetitious. There's only so much. And, you know, sports, What is? I think it was Lenin, uh, uh, one of the founders of the Communist Party, he said they were talking about religion being the opiate of the people. Mm-hmm. Anybody remember yeah, that? Yeah, that, that was Nietzsche. Who? Nietzsche, the philosopher. Bless you. Yeah. Bless you. <laughs> Yeah, that whoever said it, I yeah. knew that phrase. And I think sports is the opiate of the people today. Myself, I'm interested in a lot of other things other than sports. Do, do I watch sports? Yes, I do. Do I watch it like I used to when I was younger? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Uh, do I watch ESPN like I used to? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. And, and I just find it to be repetitious because they have too much time to fill. Mm-hmm. And I And again... If you come back to the people who make up things and try to be all cool and all that stuff, they're not appealing. And, and I'll tell you, to their credit, I'm not their target audience. I'm yep. 75 fucking years old. You if might they're going to rely though. on me, if they're going to rely on me, I'm not buying anything yeah. that they sell. What, um, it was Karl Marx, but I think you actually might be their target audience now. Yeah, it has <laughs> aged up. Was it Karl Marx? Yeah, it was Karl Marx. I looked it up. So. All right, thank you. Whoever yep. came up with that other answer. So that was wrong. me. Yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not their target. I don't. You think I'm their target audience? Seventy-five years old. Yeah, I don't I, buy anything. I well, I think the younger generation and people younger than us too have a million other platforms to get their sports highlights and discussions on. And I feel like maybe need to people a little bit older would just yeah. still tune into Sports Center to really? see what happened the night before. Maybe I could see that. Well, Maybe. let me ask you this. Assuming what you said is correct, mm-hmm. what do you think they're trying to do about that? I'm talking about ESPN. They, they must, if you know it, they know it. Yeah, I, I think that they've tried a million things. It's just not quite working. I don't think they've found an answer yet. Do you um, do you guys have any takeaway? I think this is a very yeah, good Yeah, I, I had Sports Center uh, yeah. as opposed to the whole network. Um, I don't we, watch shit on that network if it's not live sports. Yeah, I would agree. But um, if it's not what I didn't live sports. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I think okay. I think I, I wish you had had to make it more specific, but I guess you I guess you don't. Um, but yeah, ESPN was definitely on my list. What do you mean more specific? Or like if like he sports center. like sports center or a specific program because it's like it's ESPN is so big, but like it's also true that like the whole network is just not what it used to be. Mm-hmm. So don't you guys find if you watch it once during a day for a little while, basically, you know, unless there's some breaking news or something like that, it's so repetitious. Yeah. Well, that's what I used to love about it. I would sit, I'd wake up at 8 a.m. in the summers and watch 12 straight episodes of Sports Center, 100 straight episodes of Baseball Tonight. You're like, easily satisfied. But now I don't like. I can't stomach sitting through one ounce of their non-live sports anything. It's just all because hot why? takes in. Like, all right, for instance, Stephen A. Smith and, and Skip Bayless. Like I cannot stand them talking at all, ever on any single topic. Uh, they over politicize everything. It's 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 just not. Don't watchable. you feel? 
you know, I'm not talking about the politics of it now. And I'm, I'm not trying to dominate this, but you, I have a lot of opinions. Uh, <laughs> That's why you're here. I listen to Stephen A. Smith, and who's become the, the, the giant of that, yelling all the time. Enough already with the screaming. Somebody has told Stephen, I, I'll tell you one other thing I believe about this. He may be the exception because he's at the top of the pyramid. These people below him that are on there. If you think for a second that somebody behind the scenes isn't telling them act this way or act that way, or do this, or do that, you're kidding yourself. Mm -hmm. These people listen to, Eddie's got that, you guys all have the headphones on. They have headphones so, too. And mm -hmm. they're being told how they should act, what they should say, et cetera, et cetera. And Stephen A. Smith, and now he's bought, <laughs> my left. He, he's brought in what's the name, who's everywhere with him now, uh, M Mad Dog. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Mad Dog. Dude. I mean, I, I fucking show. hate that guy. I hate that guy. Why? I just curious sure is... why you hate. Because, one, he doesn't do his homework on anything he's talking about baseball related. You're talking about Mad Dog now? Yeah, Chris Stephen Russo. Is... Chris Russo. Chris Russo. Okay. He's loud and obnoxious. I hate his stupid New York accent. And he's just, like, he, I, I right, swear to God, uh, he was handed notes. He's handed the notes on what he's about to talk there's about. There's a lot of problems with ESPN. It's a worthy Five minutes pick. before the show let's, starts. Let's just keep the draft moving. Uh, that's like, you know, we spent like 20, uh, we know. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Port, we're getting repetition. Yeah, Mr. Portnoy, you're up. <laughs> I'm going to give one that I'm sure you guys don't have. L.L. Bean. Oh. Really? I. I, I still respect that when I see someone walking around in like a quilted uh, a right. quarter zip or something. I, I always think that's really prestigious, but that's from a Midwestern perspective, and, yeah. and I see it as like this kind the of. Midwest? I can, oh yeah. yeah. Can I say? Yeah, oh, but okay. it we it's a, like a northeastern thing. It's like where I'm like, oh, this must be high quality. It's from the northeast. These All people right. know about the outdoors. So. What did it I'm used to be I'll, like? I'll explain to you why I put this out here. In fact, I told my wife I was going to do this, and she looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> a long, long time ago, when you kids were in grammar school, I found out, and I used to buy a lot of stuff from L.L. Bean. So what you just said about I had an impression that the stuff was of pretty good quality. That's how I started. And the other thing that attracted me, that I knew that if I was dissatisfied with something, they would take returns, no questions asked. No questions. Bring it back, somebody's got a smile on their face, say you didn't like it for whatever reason. So I started to go and return little things. And when I would go there to the return desk, the first of all, people were so nice. The other thing is that I started to notice, I'm bringing back a pair of pants or something because there was something wrong with them. I'm standing next to somebody that has their whole wardrobe there that they've had for a month and a half or two years. In other words, L.L. Uh, Bean was accepting anything that you brought back. It was like a lending library. No question asked. Bring it back and we take it. All right. <laughs> so, look, I'm an entrepreneur and I started to notice that. <laughs> so I would wear stuff for a while. It's like a library. You bring the stuff back and, and they take it. Why not? Right? Why not? Some of the stuff, maybe I wore a little bit. Some of the stuff I didn't wear. Wait, some so stuff it, you would take the tags off and they would still just no questions asked? I, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> but I mean, I took the tags off because I was wearing the freaking stuff. I'd been wearing it. It was, it was most of the stuff was not, you know, this is embarrassing to even talk about this because it makes me seem what not like, but I'm telling you that the stuff I used to bring back in volume was nothing compared to the people that used to get in that line. And they would have, they would say it's a spring. I'm going to bring back my wardrobe but from the winter and, uh, you know, and then I'll switch into the spring and I'll bring that stuff back. And they took that, no question asked. I would say about a year and a half or two years ago, when they were losing money, they were bleeding money, and they may still be, they announced that, no, we're, we're not gonna do this anymore. It's insane. We can't take back every single item that we've sold. 
and they stopped doing it. And now two things have happened is they have more return policies, policies like any kind of retailer. And I do think, which is kind of a side thing, the quality of the stuff has gone down and the prices have gone up. Uh, so don't you so feel that, responsible that it went downhill because of people like you gaming the system? Yeah. Shut up, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happened, right? I remember when this happened because they what had... What do you think happened? I was taking advantage of them. Yes, you were, exactly. You, let me ask you, has anybody feel they've been taking advantage of a real at any point? Uh, not a real of a uh, retailer at any point? Uh... I don't know. Do you feel that way? Yeah. Um, There's some places that just give away discounts. Like you, you just Google a quick coupon code or something. You know yeah. what I mean? Those places. But I don't know if that's taking advantage. There was a gyro place in college that made a five dollars off coupon, and it was off total. So if you order like a seven, like a seven dollar meal, it was like two bucks. Hmm. And this place just got raided, and they closed. We did that with Sarpinos. That felt bad. I got one. I'm not going to name the name, but there's a, a grocery chain. And I used to live very close to it, and it was the only grocery chain of any competing brand within, we'll say like a mile or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you would think because of that, you'd wanna give the community a good experience because it's the only one. It's quite the opposite. Like their corporate strategy is like utterly neglected because you don't have a choice anyway. So mm -hmm. uh, checkout lines, when they, put in the, when they put in those automated checkout lines, we got the ones like IBM in 1995, like prototypes. <laughs> it was one of the worst. I, I still hold the Vendetta, but at the same time, it's a strong brand. So do I, yeah, every now and then I chop lift something from there. I hold a grudge. I'd be waiting in line. Don't you folks think generally based on where we are with the pandemic and everything and the retailers and the shortage of merchandise that the consumers are at the mercy of the sellers. And sometimes they're saying, you know, we're having problems, blah, 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 blah. Some of it, human nature being what it is, there are folks out there to be taken advantage of. Yeah, I, I be careful yeah. saying that too loud, though. You might be called a communist on this show. That's happened to me before by the guy to my left. Amongst well, others. is that communism that, that, that there are consumers out there being t t to be taken advantage of? That some, that some merchants would think that? According to this I, guy, it is. Speak. <laughs> I think that if a market dictates what you buy and you oblige that market, and, and the producer of whatever consumer good you're looking to potentially purchase, that's on you, not them. All right, well, let me ask you this. Human nature being what it is, and let's say that a decent percentage of you, the people that are selling things, whatever it may be, that they're trying to do the right thing. There is certainly a certain percentage of, let's call it profiteering that's going on. Do you disagree with that? Does anybody Not necessarily. If, if, if you can charge, we'll just make it an even number. If you could charge $100 for this Revitalite right here and people are still buying it for that rate, even though it only costs a couple bucks to make, that's perfectly fine. So that's me. capitalism as yeah. far as you can see. Yes, I don't, I don't see if what's Denzel wrong with Denzel Washington that. started selling $1,000 t-shirts, I think you'd have a big problem. I wouldn't. Why would I have a big problem with that? Like, I'm just using that as an example. Like, I feel like you'd be the type of guy to be like, that's fucking stupid. I would say that's fucking Kanye stupid because it. I wouldn't buy it. But if people are buying it, that's that's their, that's that. that's so, their prerogative. So, in other words, you think what capitalism is, is whatever the product may be, if somebody's buying it, that they're making a decision. I'm not necessarily saying problem. price gouging is good. I'm like, I wouldn't say that. I don't mean to be dominating this, but you're hitting on a lot of things that I think about. <laughs> and my wife doesn't want to hear it, so I'm going to talk to you. Yeah, that's why we're here. Therapy. All right, listen. I, Eddie knows I love cars. I'm a big car guy. I have always loved cars. And I've had nice cars my whole life. About 10 days ago, and I had convertibles, nice ones. But I don't have one now. I've always seen, you guys know what a Mazda MX-5 is? It's mm -hmm. a convertible. It's a beautiful little car. So there's a dealer not too far from me. So I go there and they have one. You can't even, I'm going to tell you 
White Sox day, there these are not available. So in the theory of capitalism, because there's very few available, what do you think is going to happen? The price goes up. The pr- But I want to tell you, not only does the price go up, I, I expect that. They are so independent. We don't know if we can get one for you. We don't know where it is. We think we may be able to find it. There's no guarantees. Oh, by the way, we're not even going to start this process unless you give us a deposit. All right? So I'm about to... St- they're asking me to spend at the time, I think we're tired. Yeah, it's probably in the low 30s, I think. Well, I don't even remember now. There were so many ifs, ands, or buts in this deal. And they wanted to make, some, make not a huge commitment money wise to get them the process, but it was a commitment. Years ago, you go in and buy a car. I used to love to haggle, negotiate. That's what I did for a living. <laughs> no longer. You want to buy any kind of that's a supply car. and demand. Yeah. Right. Now they right. got the upper hand. All right, I got to We got to. I'm, I'm. I got to have Oscar music for all this. It's not your fault. This <laughs> it's, it's White Sox Day's fault. It's but not I gotta my ask fault. You, Mr. Porter, is your iPad in like a cereal bowl right now? I, I feel like I, I'm like a pudding POV right now. <laughs> what? Like, I, feel like, I don't know what you're talking about. What? <laughs> I feel like I feel like you're. Uh, how's your situation? But don't touch anything because I don't want to disconnect. But I feel like you're. Like we're like you're uh, like we're a chocolate chip cookie. Like you're like we're you're just p- confusing p- them more. I know. I'm sorry. Bad angle. Eddie's saying <laughs> no, no, it's no, a bad no. angle. Oh, you're talking about <laughs> I was the, the add. physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My physical situation. Yeah, yeah. Is it okay? everything okay? Well, I'm leaning back too much, probably. Oh, okay. No, it's, yeah, it's better. Fine. Much better. <laughs> Perfect. We're, we're getting, we're Thank giving you. your nostril a little colonoscopy <laughs> right now. Better. Right, Why are you lying to him? Okay. I've had colonoscopy because you don't want to do that. I just had a hernia operation. If you want to talk about hurting. You okay? It's not better. Am I okay? <laughs> yeah. You recovered? Right now? Yeah. Uh, I hope so. I'm going back, but... And I was going to talk about medical in a, uh, when you guys get around to it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Awesome. I'm up. It's Eddie, my Eddie's uh, okay. Eddie's it's up. tomorrow. It's my pick. I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm going to go with no hitters. No what? No hitters in baseball. They used to mean oh. something. They used to be a huge deal. Uh, now it's like kind of half a big deal. How many has there been? Like 200. There's just been so many over the last, what, probably five years? When did the boom start, Carl? When did it really like? Dallas Braden. I would say like last 10-ish. Yeah, for sure. Uh, It was after the Phil Hummer one, the perfect game. No, it was Mm -hmm. like, yeah, it was like 2014, 15, I believe. I mean, they used to be in, you know, I obviously turned on Dylan Cease's almost Mm no-hitter on Saturday because it's, you know, a hometown thing. But um I just couldn't begin to care for a lot of these guys it, at this point because it's just way more. It free depends yeah. on how good the no hitter is for sure. Mm-hmm. Like Ceases would have been awesome. He almost threw a Maddox, hundred pitches, complete game shutout, no hits. I mean, not that the no hits goes into Maddox, but if the, the Edwin Jackson had one with uh, the walks, Diamondbacks and like pitches, I was going to say 169. 170 yeah. pitches, it was something absurd. Like that's not a good game, you know. And it was yeah. eight walks. I think he had too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's not. What about hitting for the cycle? Is that more rare? Oh, oh, big time, yeah. Yeah. But that's not. That's just more a product of luck than anything. I would say cycle. The cycle, yeah. Still hits though. I mean, especially in the triples, the last one to come. But we're not talking about the cycle. We're talking about the no hitter. Big evolution thing too with baseball. Like, I don't. Not to get too inside baseball, but that big part of that is just like. Uh, the game has changed where hitters are willing to strike out more and that too, willing yeah. to like take. Mm-hmm more risk in order to hit an extra base hit and we've got all these combined now like there's been i'm looking at it right now there's been one two three four like there's been oh f- no one cares about those yeah at all at all and you should like, be penalized for celebrating or like even talking about yes it. i would agree other than like you get a tweet and an instagram post story yeah. not even a post a story a story not a po- i like that i like that distinction um yeah i mean maybe uh not not too outside the box but I just I'm I'm. I'm Was, just, do you remember a no hitter recently where you, where you were like, man, those used to be better? Well, let's look at let's. I'm looking at the thing right now. I mean, it's tough because obviously Rodon and Giolito had one like that was. That yeah. was like, but the fact that you can't even pull to Rodon and Giolito instantly, I think, speaks to the the value of. Yes. That. Yeah. 
We're like Zambrano in 08 is a classic one where we're up in Milwaukee. It's the biggest deal. Alec Mills, like I don't. It, you know. it, it was a, a thing that they would cut into ESPN for. Like yeah, that was like so and so. Do they? Well, I, I, I would assume watch it. they do. So I don't I think, know. I, I, I think st- they still do that. I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing well, they you know, stop there's still Scott. Not talking died. about the elephant in the room with this. What about a perfect game, which is very rare? It's still it's good. Very, yeah, it's still good. Still, I mean, that's has yeah. not diminished at all. Is still just right. as good as it's ever been. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's 317 no hitters. And 23 perfect games. Yeah, I was gonna say 20. 23. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, perfect game still hits for sure. And when's the last that we haven't had a perfect game in 10, 10 years? What didn't? I mean, Rodon was a shoelace away. Literally. Did Jake have one, or is his both now? Two no hitters. Two no hitters. Burley, uh, I'm a big fan of his. Burley was what 08? Maybe. Braden was probably 2012. Roy Halladay. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, no hitters is my pick. They Umber just don't hit like actually. they used to. Yeah, there's Felix just, Hernandez. It's just the game's changed and outside it's the a box. Shame. 2012. Yep. Yeah, I, outside the box pick because I wasn't thinking like a, a good classic sports take. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, that's my little outside the box. Hmm. Uh, Chief, you are up. All right, so I I had two networks on the list. ESPN. I was going to do a show, but I'm going to take MTV. Uh, there is no single reason ever to tune into MTV anymore, and it was you know I used to watch it. It's it was, it was it, like remember when you used to be able to set your uh, like a favorite button. You could have like six channels. Yeah. MTV was always in there, and they had TRL. They had all the great like fucking dating shows. They had. All the great reality shows like the MTV. Shitty daytime TV was awesome. MTV yeah. was awesome. And then somewhere along the way, they've lost their way. Now that's just a marathons of ridiculousness and nothing else. But MTV, the music awards used to be fucking great. Like the music video awards. Like MTV had everything for a long time. It was like the center of the culture almost. And now it just has no relevance. I couldn't tell you the last. Actually, I, I can't couldn't even tell you. tell you what channel it is now. I couldn't. He was David the, allowed to watch uh, MTV in your house, Mr. Portnoy? Uh, that's a good question. I, we didn't restrict what he watched very much, but I don't, don't remember him specifically watching. I was not <laughs> in the MTV demographic. That's true. <laughs> they weren't selling me anything either. Yeah, yeah I mean, MTV, you I... Know, when I talk to you guys, it's like I'm coming from another world, honest <laughs> to God. Well, that's what we're going to – at some point, I'm sure the worlds will meet, I'm sure. Um, you know, I, I thought this would get back to me, so I'm kind of bummed I should have taken it there instead of no-hitters, and no-hitters probably would have got back yeah, to me. Yeah, no-hitters would have definitely got Especially back because to I'm probably I – pro- I, I've lasted on the MTV hill longer than you guys have for sure. Yeah, like, you definitely yeah. did. Like I yeah. like you, well, know. you did the challenge a little bit longer than I did. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, is this a stupid comment that I think that, like, is there something where like MTV's lost relevancy, but in the same time, like, would it still be relevant based on how old we are, or would it still be relevant based on like other innovations? I like think Spotify you would know about and it. iTunes and stuff. Like, well, I don't need to discover music; I just go right here and get it. Yeah, yeah that that definitely has something but to do I, with it. Where like ESPN's gotten worse because they just fucking. <laughs> but like the programming is worse too. Like but you don't it, need TRL anymore. But there's no demand for like good produce programming like there's no return on any investment because it's just like that you have a very, very low cost yeah, of, to, but, to but low co- that, that's what gave birth to reality tv was how low cost it was that's yeah that's why i just had rob dyrdek sitting there the, doing uh, 30 30 documentaries yes yeah. yeah. i find that most of the time interesting yeah those are good. oh yeah, yeah those those are are good. ESPN, yeah, yeah that's definitely that's a, a knock on dave's pick for sure yeah, yeah. um but no but here's the thing what you almost feel bad for mtv yeah, because they just fell victim to like like the suit and the culture. I I don't see like I think that there's still like bro if we if if, if Barcelona didn't care about their brand, and they're just like hey this is what's going stop everything and just make TikToks because that's the where the world is yeah. trending like that's what they did it's just cheaper to film ridiculousness yeah. a million times a fucking I know but like you know? And I, it sucks I, it does suck but I also think that there would be like music videos are still being made. And they're just on YouTube. You couldn't run a program where you're p- playing those like just on loop like they used to. You should turn in. It was like oh, we got a half hour of like the top twenty. Yeah. And, like they don't want to do that anymore. Uh, breaking news: the Queen has died. So, Mr. Portnoy. Uh oh. Uh oh. I thought we died. might make it through this program. No. <laughs> R.I.P. The Queen. Damn. Um, but 
<laughs> yeah, but I think I think MTV has had a way sharper decline than ESPN because ESPN still has a live programming, I like the live games and stuff, where and Thirty for Thirty and a few other things. MTV has nothing. They have literally you nothing know, anymore. Th- there's a famous TV executive whose name I can't think of off the top of my head. Uh, and all it's a famous quote. He said, they, the answer to all your questions is money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. Like, it's just, it's yeah. cheaper and it's just more profitable for them to do what they're doing now. And that's why they do it. They, and it sucks, but it's it a sucks. good pick. Yep. Carl. I just want to point out that if somebody just found out that the queen died as this is airing a couple days later and you're like very devastated, I just think that's like really funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like if Chief just died, he was like, hey, uh, I, why don't you cheer up? It's been four days. Relax. Yep. But My you buddy. Know uh, yo, what's up? We're, we're, we're Americans. All right. It, that's different. I mean, obviously, uh, it doesn't make sense to me. I agree with you. All right. But because we're not. You know, she's been there for uh, most of these people. She's been there their whole their whole life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, so yep. it's just a whole different thing. It is. It is. But, you know, Washington Cross of Delaware, so we didn't have to care about this. Yeah. So. On Christmas Day, right? Yeah, it's true. Yep. Yep. All right, Carl. Um, surprised Eddie didn't take this because we've talked about this a lot. And I've sensed, like, you're very passionate about this. Um, I'm taking... I'm taking comedies, generally mm-hmm. comedic movies. Uh, Was on when we list. did the comedy draft, or like any time we talk about comedy stuff, I feel like nothing is even remotely recent or modern. Is that and the further back you go, it's like mm-hmm. see, I want like my dad will show me shit that like he grew up on on comedies. I'm like, this is fucking stupid, and like he'll watch it to this day. For instance. This is a bad example. It's not a bad example, but um, uh, have you guys seen the movie The Jerk with no. uh, Steve Martin? Uh, Steve Martin. <laughs> yeah, where he's the, uh, yeah. He's yeah. Just like the, the New York guy. Doofus. Awesome. Yeah, it's like a funny movie. No, my, my dad swears habit. to God it's the funniest movie ever made. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I think comedy just evolves over time, and we're getting to the point where we're old as fuck. And no, it, no, they stop making them. Though, they dude. they just don't. Like, and it's just more so. Same thing with MTV. The movie industry changed. Actually, Matt Damon was on Hot Ones with Sean. Yeah, yeah. and he had a really I good explanation. It. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you you could take. I it don't away. know. Yeah. So he his basic thing was like, well, it, you need to spend fifty million right away on production and fifty million right away on marketing and advertisement. And so right out of the gates, doesn't matter what type of movie you're gonna make, you need to forecast over a hundred million dollar in revenue just to break even. And uh, and so it's just like no one wants to take the risks unless it's something that they know will have return, like a Star Wars or a Marvel or something like that, where they know they're gonna be able to bank it up at the box office. And the, the backside of it was they knew even if they didn't open great, that DVD sales and, in, and even DVD rentals would back up so you have almost like a second opening and that just doesn't exist anymore because they don't get that from streaming the same way they got it from people right. spending 20 bucks on a DVD. So it's just harder to make money doing movies. I would say though, I don't necessarily accept that. Like just make find a way to make them for cheaper. Mm-hmm. Like doesn't, not everything has to be, you know. That's some grandiose. Do, yeah. you, do you still buy DVDs, Mr. Portnoy? What are you serious? What are you crazy? <laughs> I think you, I think that's a fair question. Mr. I, I, number one, I, I I'd even know if we have anything here that I would play it on. I I don't know. Mm-hmm. Proud of I, I want to say to you uh, too, when you talk about the cost factor and everything, the numbers might have changed because of inflation. You know, as far as how much it would cost to do it and mm-hmm. the risk involved. But I think it's been like that for some time. Then you know. The numbers are bigger because of inflation, but the risk, if you go back at what it was, you know, a short time ago, it was, it's been there for a while. That's why they make these movies that somebody like me doesn't go to. Yeah. Because the other ones with the monsters and, the, and all this stuff, they're in them because, you know, it's uh, guaranteed money. Yeah. And it's, I, I, my only point is I think that that situation has existed for some time only the numbers may have changed because of inflation yeah like, that's what i'm saying and I, it's I, always been risky well matt damon i think he was he, he even used some of the movies that he would make in the 90s whether it be goodwill hunting or something else it just cost it was it cost way less to make it 
And, yeah. you know, and it, and it just, they didn't, you know, they knew that if, if it was a good movie, even if people didn't see it in the theater, people would buy the DVD. So it's like, well, our opening wasn't great, but we know this is a great movie and word of mouth will spread and we'll make it up on the DVD. And now it's just not, not in the, not in the cards. Yeah, that sounds legitimate to yeah. me. And obviously it goes without saying, people are afraid to offend everyone. So yeah, that's that, a big thing. Yeah, that's a that huge too, problem. For sure. I watched Old School yeah. recently, like within the last month First or so. First scene drops a hard F-bomb. Yeah. So there's yeah. like just all sorts of things that were like, even just, what was that, 20 years ago? That was fine, and now it's just like you, you can't do it. Yep. So, I'm going to tell you guys something that uh, just strikes me as ironic, and I'm sure you're not familiar with it, but I'm going to recommend it to you. You probably could still get it. Uh, the blonde that was in Friends, I forgot her name already. Jennifer Aniston. Who? Was, who? Jennifer Aniston. No, Lisa the Kudrow. Lisa Kudrow. Yeah. Lisa, Lisa Kudrow. Okay. I would say eight, ten years ago. She, and she, she's very smart. She was the lead character in a show where she played a psychiatrist or a, a, a psychologist, maybe. And the whole theme of the show was, we're going to have people call in and I will give them psycho psychology pointers or psychiatric advice on the phone. And she was someone who was so self-centered and out of touch with who she was and a narcissist of the first order. These people would call up and all she cared about was making money from this phone call. And it was, I mean, and now the only reason I'm bringing it up is I hear these people advertising on TV legitimately to do that. You know, call this number and we'll contact you with a psychologist or a psychiatrist to discuss your problems. <laughs> and she was doing this as a comedy seven or eight, nine years ago that was hilarious. Wait, why are you and like, she, <laughs> do you see this? Do you guys see this much? I don't know what we're talking about. I've seen point. it on this show. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. Oh. Have you seen uh, the show? Well, I don't know. It's a little different. That's like a. Like he, I think he's talking about like uh, You're talking like, like a, Miss Cleo or like something. A, uh, like a nine hundred number yeah. back in the day. Yeah, only it wasn't that obvious. Obvious that you were being taken advantage of. Yeah, it, the real problem was this Lisa Kudrow, the character she was playing. She was the one that had the problems. She she was so self centered. Yeah. She had so many personal problems. She was such a narcissist. But if she started as an easy way to make a buck, and White Sox Dave, that's capitalism. If somebody wants to pay this idiot to give them crazy advice, and you're stupid enough to pay them, well, so be it. And so Lu Lisa Kudrow's character and friends ruined comedy movies, is what you're saying. I don't know about ruined. I thought it was funny. <laughs> Indirectly, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Carl, you're up again. Um, I'm going to take the entire catalog of United States presidents. I feel like early on it was just like just badass or like, you know, somebody who I was love this pick. foundational in something or, you know, really formative uh, players. And and then at the end, I mean, we just lump in however many you want to go back. I mean, to, from the mid 20th century, like we got no Roosevelt's coming anytime soon. Amen got, to that. This right. is an awesome pick. I love it. I'm very curious on your take on that, Mr. Portnoy. Uh, White Sox, White Sox, Dave, shut your, shut your thing off. No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Let's just say uh, the individual was there before the one that's there now. I always tell people, you could have gone through a phone book and pick the name and come up with a better president. That tells you how I feel. What about the one now? Yeah. I, mm. <laughs> the one now. Well, well, first of all, why, now, why, why, why me? All right, I think it was just a plain off edge joke. I don't, don't think I'm going to tell you the one now, if it was up to me, he would say, I'm X number of years old. I'm going to let somebody else do this. Okay. Because I'm. There's no reason there are other people that could do this job right now other than me. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm not a hardline guy on the left by any stretch of the imagination. All right, there are other people that could take over and I wish they would so that other people can't keep stepping all over this thing and creating havoc, which is gonna be bad ultimately for all of us. That's how I feel. What do you guys got on this? I wonder if this is something that every every generation thinks. You know, like I, I think that and question. now we're going back and it's like and I, I'm not a fan of this, but there's like this modern movement to like cancel a lot of the old guys who might have had some personal indiscretions or some some major they were trying to cancel Lincoln a couple major a couple character years ago. flaws and then but like you could say, you know, like Right, they were trying to cancel Lincoln, but Lincoln, you know, I think there are people at the time who'd be like, well, he suspended habeas corpus. And, like, he, you know, like, he did other things, too. So I, I do think that there were probably times that everyone's like, man, like, I wish we had, you know, fucking somebody else from 50 years ago when it was Lincoln. You know, I, I do think that every generation just complains about their own guys. I do think that we have had, like, I don't know. I just feel like we haven't even had. I've never been like inspired to vote for somebody where I'm like, I feel good about voting for somebody. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Or even my options. Like, I don't feel good about it's either. Yeah. Tart sandwich and uh, yeah. And yeah. and what's the other one? Meanwhile, you know, Andrew Jackson's riding around with the Tennessee Volunteers in New Orleans in 1812 while the rest of the country is on fire. Guy who runs for office. Regardless of the side, my point is, to your point, easy to show up for that guy cast a vote. Or, or at least feel passionate about the uh, uh, electoral race, yeah. so to say. Mm -hmm. uh, Reagan was the last one that just threw, threw a banger. I'm taking the entire catalog. I don't want people United to come back States and say, like, yeah, the, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, no, I wrote down the US presidents. Two, yeah. Like, yeah. And I feel like there's been enough seesaw over, uh, you know, several decades now where um, that's a pretty neutral fucking pick. Mm -hmm. um, Giant um, douche right, and Chief. turd sandwiches. That's what you get to pick between. Chief, you are up. I'm up. Yep. Uh, let me look at my list. Um, Caught you off guard. Yeah, you did. Well, I thought we had another half hour of Mr. Portnoy <laughs> talking, but I would have been ready for it. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I will take, I think this, I don't know how this will play off, but I'll take the work schedule. I feel like back in the day, before smartphones, before emails, you left the, the office at five and you were done until you showed up the next day at nine. Now you can just never really truly unplug. Your phone's always on, you're always getting emails. Us, you know, like that's the nature of our job. We have to be tweeting and stuff at night, but I think that's a problem universally across the workforce, unless you're like a true, like, blue collar union guy where you're showing up to a factory, I think everyone else is probably on an email list or they're getting dings, they're getting calls, they're getting things at all hours where back in the day you got to leave at five o'clock and you could shut your work train Afraid off. Afraid to shut your phone off. And Afraid yeah. to shut your phone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what? what? Yeah, I, I wanna hear what Mr. Portnoy says about this one. Are you retired, Mr. Well, Portnoy, or are you still uh, an act? Am I what? Are you retired or are you still practicing law? No, I'm not practicing law anymore. Just but I'm doing this. I'm not retired. I'm getting Eddie's paying me for this. Okay, that's, yeah, that's fair. So you are still working. <laughs> this is hard work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We know that. We take this very seriously. <laughs> no, I, I, hey, it's a different world. I, uh, you know, what you can't, the reason you can't shut the phone off is because you know, anybody would know. That if you're at all competitive, if you shut your phone off, somebody else isn't. Right, and an that's where you you get left behind. Yep. I uh, who did I talk to about it? Maybe maybe Dave or Dan. Dan. How how nice it must have been to be uh, Francesa. You know, he showed up. He did his show from you know two to six, and then he went and watched the game, and he wouldn't have to tweet about it, wouldn't have to do anything. And then his next thing where people would hear from him would be that show. Like that's Yep. That's nice. That's it's a, a lucky nice, time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, that's a yeah. very, very good time. The sweet spot some would say in that profession. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think that was probably if you were selling, you know, fucking com, com, computer chips in nineteen eighty nine 
and you're like, well, we didn't get that deal done. Well, we'll see what the what we get from you know we'll schedule phone calls or whatever with the Asian market in the morning mm-hmm. when we're back at the office. You're not going home and doing personal calls and emails and and doing things in constant communication with everybody all the time. So I like the idea of like the work schedule. Like you had your eight hours a day, and then after that you're done. Mm-hmm. It's like. Uh like I don't think it's gonna play for you, but I think obviously if you listen, you know, yeah, you, we, you get what you mean. Um, <clears throat> all right, so the work schedule is off the board. It's to me. Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess it's not. It's not a deep one, but it's true. It's just journalism. <laughs> yeah. You know, like re- just reporting. Rep- it's 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 the wild wild west. You could pretty much say. What happened? You kick something? You good? It's on mine. It's no. I moved this thing. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, we're good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Journalism, like journalism slash reporting, is really my pick. I don't know if that all goes in one or not, but uh, that's the pick. Okay. I I think that was. Uh, so I had newspapers on my list, um, which is a little bit more specific, but yeah, I think that's that's definitely a a, a valid pick and something where it's just like you. You used to be able to trust it. That was like a respected institution, and now it's just like, well, what's their angle? You yeah. know, and it's Do you just, guys even read newspapers anymore? I would like to. I haven't seen one in a while, but I, I used to like a newspaper when I was a oh, kid, yeah. checking box scores and you know, reading on the train or whatever. I used to love that. You know, so I'm, I'm going to tell you guys, I'm someone who, if you would have told me five years ago that I wouldn't be looking – at the hard copy of the Boston Globe seven days a week. It was unimaginable to me. Yeah. Unimaginable. Mm-hmm. Now, I just get the Globe online. I don't even look at it at Sundays anymore because there's nothing in it that interests me. All right? So you take somebody, if they lose my demographic, which they have, they're in trouble. Yeah, which they are. They are. They're obviously. Oh, they're trouble. all shutting They've down. Yeah. Yeah, but journalism reporting. First, you got to make sure that the source is even like serious about yep. it. You know, you got so many people just fucking around on Twitter. Then you. Then it's like, all right, what's what's what are they in it for? What are they? Who's who's in bed with? There's. It's just. Yeah. It's it's uh it's it's and it's no maybe it's always them. been that way to an extent, but I don't know. It I, just feels I, a what, lot. What do you, I, I think, don't you think there's a tremendous pressure? that is increased exponentially to be first yeah, and yep. not necessarily accurate. And yeah. there's also tremendous pressure to get the headline because everybody's paid by clicks now, right. not by buying the paper where you'll just right. see every mm-hmm. story. Right. Yep. So the, the headlines are now just dog shit because they rely they don't on care. people clicking those yeah, headlines. They don't care like what's in the article. They, yeah. just, they just want to write a salacious headline. Yeah, and that's it could all be in. misleading as fuck, but they don't care because it's like, right. that's I, what it's they putting need. money in the I was, with that. Another movie I watched recently was The Post. It was all about The Washington Post. and, and that's, well, that's a good movie. A very good movie. And they, had, they talked about this reporter for the New York Times, and his name is Neil Sheehan. And right. he would work on a story for three months or longer. And it's like, well, he hasn't had anything in a while. Like, he, you know, the, so the post is like competitive about like, he's gotta be working on something big. It's gonna be big and they're gonna sell papers everywhere and they're gonna be the institution. And and now it's just like, can you think of a person that you're like, I trust that guy anywhere, any Woodward. journalist, what? Woodward. But that was like the, no, like no. Bob Bob Woodward. I mean, he kind of just does books now, but- um, but yeah, but like he was, you know, he was, that was like the whole deep throat thing too. And, but it's like, yeah, like there's just nobody that I can't think of a reporter that I like think of as like a celebrity And it's not reporter. even their fault completely. It's just a world change where the queen just died. Someone hops on their laptop. Boom. That's out in five minutes. Yep. These fuckers got to wait for a day. You know, like they, like that's long, crazy yeah. to think about. Or that. longer. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Who's the, who's the sports journalist uh, for ESPN that did the long thing on Michael Jordan? That guy's really good. He does the super, super, super long form articles for ESPN. They come. Uh, I, th- I honestly think one comes out like every couple of years or something. And is he Southern? Wit, Rome, something. I forget. Yeah. I forget. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what's the name, son. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, and man. I love this father and I love him. He's the best one on there. Uh, and of course, I don't have his name. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm talking about, We're talking you about the, the same guy. Yeah. Right. Pull it uh, up. Jeremy Shap? Is that what we're no. talking Jeremy about? Jeremy Shap. No, Shapp. not Jeremy. Come on. 
Yes, oh, I liked it. Jeremy Schaap and his father was great. Mm -hmm. He's still around. Yeah. Ed, are you all for the Ministry of Truth? Wright Thompson. Wright Thompson. Wright That's Thompson. the Southern guy. We've That's, done yeah, this before yeah, on the yeah. show, I believe. I don't remember. Um, so, he yeah, journalism work. reporting, whatever you want to say, is my is my pick. Mr. Portnoy, you're up again. All right. Uh, Dr. Zeitler. Hmm? What? Dr. Zeitler. You don't know who he is. I'm going to tell you. Dr. Zeitler was my doctor. <laughs> no. <laughs> he was my doctor 100 years ago in Malden, Massachusetts. And I used to walk into his office. He'd be smoking a pipe. I would make an appointment 10 minutes before I went to see him. I'd go in and see him. And whatever my problem was, he gave me as much time as I needed. And he was such a great guy. Now, and I'm not criticizing my internist, but there's something up online when I go in to see him, down below it says how much time I have. I have an hour for this visit. I have 40 minutes. I have 35 minutes. That has, you talk about things going downhill. That's downhill on a slide. <laughs> I mean, especially the older you get, right? I don't want to be treated like you kids. I'm a little older. I could use a little tender loving care, you know? But it's changed. And I see that. And then the thing that comes afterwards, for sure, from the medical providers, were you happy with your visit? <laughs> Come on. Dr. Zeitler never called me to say if I was happy with my visit. He just took care of me. So that has gone down big time. Big time. Hmm. And that's the world we live in. So we're taking medical care? No, Dr. Zeitler. No. <laughs> Don't even think about <laughs> yeah. changing this up. We're, Dr. Zeitler is the pick. No, but, he like, but you don't still see Dr. Zeitler, do you? Uh, he's not with us anymore. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. <laughs> Dr. Zeitler. So, like, okay. yeah, so he's, you're taking, like, the medical experience. With Dr. Yes. Zeitler. Yeah. Dr. Zeitler. Yes. Yeah. Dr. Okay. <laughs> do you think that that, like, countdown clock or how much time you have might just be something that they put in for you? Like, I know when I, like, have my six-year-old nephew. Mean me in particular? Yeah, because, you know, you can be a little <laughs> long-winded and, <laughs> like, they you. might just be like, well, hey, we got to give, we got to put the shot clock on this guy. He's got 30 minutes and he's got to go. I have a feeling it's not just me. I would not be happy if I thought it was just me. Yeah, imagine that. They just had clock people, yeah. clock patients and yeah. non-clock patients. Like, oh, we got a uh, poor No, night. I know what the reason is. I really do know what the reason is. These medical people get paid from the government. Yeah. Medicare, I'm on Medicare and whatnot. And the government, you'll like this, White Sox, Dave. The government <laughs> is dictating to these people how much time, especially somebody, I, you know, I'm on the dole. I'm on Medicare. All right. And they set rules that say how long you can treat a patient. This doctor, I'm not, hey, this doctor, these doctors are under a lot of pressure. They have to see so many, they have to justify seeing so many patients over a given period of time in order to get paid. Yep. That's what it is. Dr. Zeitler. Dr. I hear you. Hey, look, there's a lot. Paging like, Dr. Rest in peace. Zeitler. He ain't going to answer the page, but you can page him. <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, but no, there's there's a lot of good points there. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the reviews is a big thing, like how they have to just keep people happy now because they yep. just they, they, so it's a good pick. Mm -hmm. uh, White Sox, Dave, you're up. I got a actually. I think I got a bunch left right now that are all equally good. I'm gonna go with, uh, and this is, ah, this is kind of like on car. Mm, I don't know if I want to do it. Mm. No, fuck it. I'm just, I'm just gonna take another easy one. I'm gonna go with The Simpsons. I just looked it up. They, their 33rd season ended in May. Um, the 33rd season had 2.3 million viewers uh, total. It looks like down from 2.4 the pre previous year. Back when it was at its peak, November 1st of uh, 2000 was the start of 
their 21st season, 14.7 million viewers for that season premiere. Does that include Disney Plus subscribers or streams? I have no fucking clue what it includes, but when's the last time anybody here has watched an epi- uh, a new episode of The Simpsons? It's just gone 2007. so downhill. Yeah. But it used to be appointment television when we were growing up. Yep. And for great reason, too, because it was a great show. Uh, Conan O'Brien was the uh, the writer for it in the 90s and everything. I would go. I right. almost forget it exists here and there. I would go right from NFL primetime on Sunday nights over to The Simpsons, and that like was that every was the routine. Week. All it was a family event for us. Yeah. Every Sunday, every new season, the entire yeah, I don't, family. I don't. I don't think this is a uh, outside. I mean, this is it's well known. that yep. The Simpsons. People think The Simpsons has gone downhill. So, yeah, uh, it's a worthy. Mr. Point, were you a Simpsons fan? Not as much as you would think. My son was big time. Yeah. Big time. The Simpsons. All right, Dave, what's your wraparound then? Uh, the wraparound, let's see. Let's go back to my list. I'm going to go with uh, Adam Sandler movies. Mm. Yeah. And it sucks because his last one might have been his greatest performance as an actor as a whole. Uh, Uncut, it wasn't his last one, but his last mostly well-known one, Uncut Gems. He was fantastic in it. But um, from like late 90s, I would say even through um, – the Longest Yard, Adam Sandler, just his comedy movies are fucking unwatchable. They're so bad, I, I cannot stomach to even watch them. So, I feel like Carl already took this, though. That's what I was That's what I was going to bring up. I mean, Simpsons even kind of falls into that. I think. You think mm, so? I, don't, I think Is he took more... specifically movies, and I don't think TV comedies have gone downhill. I think TV comedies are still great. But yeah, that's probably yeah. a little cannibalized, but I still think it's I it's, no it's a genre no. of its own. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I think mine was more like um, I, I'm saying comedy is generally just from like an industry standpoint over a long period okay. of time. Uh, if you want to isolate Adam Sandler movies, I think that makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. You know, in the uncut gems, and you bring that up to me, that's like like you say Adam Sandler movie. Like I'm not gonna say Punch Drunk Love is an Adam. Have Sandler you seen movie. that movie? No, I know. It's Super probably, fucking weird. That probably. hurts though. It hurt. It hurts that it's gonna be on this graphic to me though. But it's true though. Yeah, and, and it's that, not. It's not wrong at all. Like, uh, well, so, but at the a, same time, he's getting a badge. He gets paid like yeah, fifty million that's to make a is, movie, and it's sure, like yeah. his wife is this, he, is playing his wife, and yeah, yeah, he's got a contract for more than one mo- to do numerous movies. And I mean, can't human say nature no, being right? what it is, I mean, you can see anybody after a while, you know, you, you don't have the motivation, I wouldn't think. You know, they did a movie, they filmed a movie right near where I live a while back. It was atrocious. Atrocious. That was the one where he was getting all, uh, Chris Rock was in it, and uh, Grown they did ups, all of, yeah. what was it called? Grown Ups? Yes. I thought that was kind of liked. I haven't seen it. Two was not. Funny. I saw that there was a second one, but I thought the first one people as a whole like yeah, thought it was, was okay. You know, can I just say one other thing here? What we talked about about the cost factor a little while ago, that's all wrapped up into all these questions about the quality of what's coming out of the meat grinder, so to speak. It really is. You can't separate those issues because somebody like uh, uh, Adam Sandler, He's making money no matter what. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I don't and, blame him. And he's the type of guy that the money is there to make the movie. And where's the incentive to make it, you know, as good as it can be? Probably not there. Yeah, I get it. I get it. It's just a shame because, like, what we grew up on, and I say we as in the four of us with all due respect to Mr. Portnoy, it's all like right. Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, the water boy. Like just wedding singer, wedding singer. Wedding singer is maybe my favorite Adam Sandler movie. It's, ma- I it's maybe my favorite movie, movie ever. Period. Period. Yeah. Love <laughs> that movie. Not even because of the funny of it. It's, it's just a great, a movie. great movie. Yep. Um, <laughs> you just don't get that Adam Sandler anymore. It's a damn yeah, shame. And, and and the point is, if you're a nobody, you ain't gonna get a movie made. It's mm-hmm. too no nobody I, to find someone that will finance something for a, for for a nobody. It just isn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're right. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's it's, it's a, sad. It's sad. It's sad. Okay, Mr. Port, now you're up again. All right. I don't know how you fellas feel about this. You're probably not as thickened by it as I am. <laughs> College sports with the transfer rule. Thank you. Ooh. I I can't. I hate it. 
I, it's turned. I always knew college sports was a big time business. Now, anybody that doubts that just isn't paying attention. And it's a, it's just and I you know you not you guys might not believe this, but I'm pretty naive when it comes to some of this stuff. But to watch some of the in any big time college sport, I don't you know football, basketball. It's just a business, like everything else. They, I'm not involved, but obviously, the recruiting is going on 12 months a year in all these sports. You can only imagine what must be going on that we don't even know about. Mm-hmm. It's business. It's just business. And in that regard, that's why it sounds silly, but professional sports is probably more honest. Yeah, I think I, I I couldn't I had college football and college basketball on my list and I couldn't decide between them. So you just taking college sports was perfect because they're they're both so much like the conference realignment thing. Like, oh, you know, please. like if they keep going, you're going to separate Duke and North Carolina. And it's, you know, and I'm, I'm fine with everybody going one and done. But at college basketball was better when guys stayed three, four years and you got. But like, they don't. I, that's what I mean. I'm with you. That's why I think it's a great pick. It was way better when you had JJ Redick for four years, Tyler Hansbro for four years. You know, like, those, I, like I, I, I'm sure I'm the only one. I'm an, I, when I watch now and I hear them say how many transfers. Yeah, you, you got people that have been there for five minutes. Yep, <laughs> and mm-hmm. it's just crazy. And you're talking about thirty percent of the roster or more. Mm-hmm. Oh nuts. yeah, and they still have their not for profit um, status. Oh yeah, you know, so it's a fucking scam on that level too. So, um, I agree with that. Yeah, so I I'm with you. College sports were way better. I always say if if someone ran for president and they're like, we'll put college sports back the way it was in 1996, I'd vote for them no matter what. But you know something? Maybe it was maybe it was bad then, and we just didn't know. It felt better. Like Mm. we just got the backyard brawl back on for the first time in over a decade. Like that should be like the day after Thanksgiving every single year, and instead we had to take 10 years off we haven't when was the last time we had texas texas a&m like th- this is just like these are things that college sports were built on college football and now we just don't do it in the name of money it pisses me off I, i'll never get over it but i'll the never transfer get over rule it. i i don't like it as a spectator but if i were a major power five athlete in college basketball or college football it's a must it really is a must because uh, like uh, like these guys are they're not playing for money. Obviously, they get scholarships, but they they <laughs> had zero. That. Most the vast majority of them don't though. The vast 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 majority of them don't. And if like they had no leverage, it's they can't transfer to a school because their coach won't let them. That's bullshit. It's college. You're not getting paid to be there. You're not collecting a paycheck. Maybe something under the table, but that's different conversation. So. As much as it sucks to see like like Ben Skoranek and 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 uh, and uh, Joseph, um, what, what, why am I blanking on his name? Brandon Joseph. Brandon Joseph. Yeah. Uh, go to Notre Dame from my school. I get it. But like the Skoranek thing, like he did four years and then he was a grad. Like yeah, that's, that's, that's little, different. Yeah, like, that's but different. these guys, like Michigan State, was awesome last year. Which they were a bunch of mercenaries. All, well, exactly. it's like I think a yeah. better example is St. Peter's. Like all those guys, yeah, like, yeah. they had one of the most yeah. incredible runs, and all those guys just left. Just so. and, and when you watch that, you knew damn well what was going to happen. Yeah. you don't have to be you don't have to be a genius to know that. You saw it immediately. This is a temporary. Uh, this is a temporary situation. Yeah, but at the same time, it's cool. Those guys didn't grow up wanting to go to St. Peter's, but they put themselves in a position to go to somewhere better. Like, you know, that's yeah, cool. I mean, I sure. that. Yeah, I get that. That's awesome, too. It sucks. Yeah. It's yeah. the nature of the beast now. So do you want just college sports or college sports transfer rules specifically? I watch the transfer rules. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I have a hard time now. I, I, I find myself listening to how many transfers are on these big – at these various games, and I just shake my head. It's just to me, it's obscene. Yeah, yeah. it's well, obscene. How about when it was Pitt versus West Virginia last weekend, and both quarterbacks were the starter at USC at one point? Yeah, you know, it's like, what are we doing? <laughs> I didn't even know that. Yeah, I watched the whole but game. You know, yeah. And you know, um, why? And I, this is an adjunct to what we're talking about, which I think is very legitimate. Have you ever heard any announcer from one of these? one of these games say something remotely negative about that 
You know what I mean? They just go along. They're silent about it. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, you like you just said about you got the two USC quarterbacks there yep. that have transferred. Can somebody say something? You know, this. I don't know what, but at least acknowledge that this ain't the best situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, they, you know, they, they again, the announcer's jobs hinge on coming back next week. They have people they have to answer to. And again, which seems to be the theme here, the answer to all your questions is money. Yep. Yep. You're right. Okay, it's to me. Before I make my uh, third round pick, I want to talk about the Game Time app, the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. Uh, hey, if you're looking to take a ride up to Lambeau this Sunday and you want to see. Uh, the Bears take on the Packers. Make sure you're checking out the Game Time app for tickets. Isn't that right, boys? Oh, it's oh, yeah. the best. It is the absolute best. I've used it all summer long, different things. And then, you know, football season, It's if you don't have the Game Time app on your phone heading into football season, you've made a big mistake. You have. There's concerts coming up. I believe Harry Styles is playing at the yeah, UC. Yeah, Harry Styles, yep. yes. For a week. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big thing. Yep. Um, so go do it. Go download the Game Time app. Go to the account tab to create a login and redeem code DOGWALK for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Download game time. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. White Sox, Dave. Also, there's going to be a lot of uh, White Sox season hopefully heating up. You know, go get your tickets there. Hopefully, yep. they've hey, turned, they've turned a corner. Before. Cautious again. Cautious until they turn yes. the other corner. So, so go check um, out the game time app for your tickets. I have had like six people reach out to me this summer and say, "Hey, this has actually like been a seamless transition from other ticket apps." So beautiful, beautiful, yep. love it. All right, so it's to me. Uh, there have not been any food product or food based ones yet mm-hmm. so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna jump into that category Ooh. and i'm taking uh burger king burger king is dog shit now wow I do you agree no i want you to keep going uh the fries suck and i'm not saying i do or don't agree i just want to i want to like yeah um, i mean i haven't and i the floor is all yours right now i'm pulling a white Sox dave now where i haven't had it in years but there's a reason for that and it's just awful what was the point where you were like, no more? They changed the fries. They got rid of the crown chicken nuggets. Do you remember those? Yep. Um, what do you mean the crown? Like it looked like a crown. It shaped like a like crown. It looked like a, like a little pterodactyl paw. Yeah. So you were know? you biased during the Burger King manager interview? Did he know? I don't remember that. Yeah, I, I, we talked about okay, it. Okay, you were straight I mean, up giving... talking to the BK man. And that's for people who don't know, Eddie, <laughs> it was in like the our early first... days of dog walk, went the, um, the like went across Earliest the street days. to the Burger King in the Ukrainian village and was just like, hey, man, when you get off work, come across the street. I'd love the to one at Western and Chicago yeah, Avenue. Show. Ed, this is how the story went. It was me and Ed sitting in the back room, and Ed's like, all right, I really want to order or uh, interview a Burger King guy. And I'm like, go and ask someone for Burger King. And Ed comes back with a big-ass grin on his face, and I'm like, look, and I'm like, it was like literally two or five minutes. It was like within a few minutes. And he's like, he said he's in. That was it. <laughs> then he came over with the yep. with the slushy, and he we interviewed. I interviewed yep. him. It was it was good. Uh, but it's no, credit to him. Friends. That guy tried his hardest to put this place back on the map, but it's their corporate. And yep. if you look into their like, because um, I, I think are they part of like Yum Brands or something now? They're not. Okay. I looked into who. Uh, I don't want to give away any picks, but someone's tweeted at me about like what's going on there. If you look at who their corporate partners, there's another brand that is very popular that's seemingly supposed to be like damage because of the same really the same uh, management mm. group so i can't really comment on this because my dad gave them a permanent lifetime probation in 1996 and i have honored that so i have not had it since 96 when apparently it was good and you I got used, out the right time yeah so sh- shout do you out. agree though or no you'd probably be the only person no i that. think that i think the flame broiled is a, is still like a unique flavor uh but to your point yeah it's absolutely gone downhill and the barometer for that to me is the is the breaded chicken sandwich the long thin one mm-hmm. i mean those things used to be yeah, I remember those. Highly sought after. Or shred lettuce life. on top. Mm-hmm. And now it's just like a, a bukkake of fucking mayo on top of that thing. I don't like it. No. Mr. Porno, you got a Burger King take? <laughs> you know something? People don't believe this. I have never had a McDonald's, a Burger King, or a, Win- or a Wendy's in my mouth. <laughs> Burger? <laughs> my, t- my, my, my body is my temple, as they say. <laughs> And it hasn't been invaded by that crap. I will wow. say, though, which is bothers me, my grandson, who is 11, uh, Max B. he's a Chick-fil-A fan. 
I and he's had McDonald's, so I'm not in control of that situation. But I, I've just never, not because I had any real, I just it never appealed to me to hmm. eat it. I'm sure, like that's surprising. Back when fast food was really rampant, when was that? Fifties. You don't think it's still rampant now? No, like like starting, like becoming a oh. thing. You ever think about that? Like, how good was that first? Uh, yeah, that's KFC what I'm saying. It was probably like actual real ground beef like, how and good chicken. Was that shit for the it was probably well, awesome. Was it? Yeah, it's probably mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, I've looked at a documentary about the McDonald's, the first McDonald's before my time, actually, and uh, about the McDonald's brothers and how what's the name? Uh, Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc took it over from them. They started it. And he saw the opportunity. It was an interesting uh, documentary. Yeah, it's good. The founder. And it was also a movie. Yeah, it's a, a good movie. movie. The founder. Yeah. Good movie. Uh, but, but yeah, I, Burger King certainly don't run downhill. So that's my I, I think it's a good pick. I, I, there's, I like what you're saying about like a first food pick. That's uh, you know, we have some similarities yeah. on the board, some programming, you know. Uh, and people are passionate about food. No, it, it, can you tell the other other brand that has gone downhill? I I don't think anybody's going to pick yeah, it. Yeah, no one's going to pick it, but it is supposedly. I've only had it once, um, but this is monster, monster, monster in Canada. Apparently, this, so this brand bought Tim Hortons. Okay. And apparently yep. Tim Hortons has just fallen off a fucking cliff. Garbage. Really? Absolute yeah. garbage. So I had it for the first time in a while in Buffalo, and, like, I had a bite, um, and I, like, had to spit out the rest of the sandwich. Yeah. Like, I just couldn't eat it. In the co Even the coffee, which used to be, like, an institution – it was just like this is burnt gross yeah. coffee so yeah that makes a lot i didn't know that they were in the same, same group, group yeah. but i remember I, and I like tweeted about it when i was in buffalo and uh this was so that was maybe like a month and a half ago something like that and, and like everyone was like yeah like they've really taken a, a steep dive yeah. is yeah. in and out burger in the same category i've never had that no yet. i think no, in and no. out's like good it's people like ah. but they're not in the same management group that's, no i think no. that's what he was asking okay yeah um but yeah tim horton supposedly it's i never had it when it was when it was i had it once in michigan yeah. um chief you're up you know i think my board looks a lot different than you guys i'll go with the horny pick and i'll take the sports illustrated swimsuit issue Mm. That used to be like an absolute, at least for me, growing up, institution, came out every February when the, whoever was on the cover, like you kind of remembered them for life. And they were like, a, a, it was like a big deal and a big honor. And now I, like, I don't even know if they make it anymore. Like I don't, like it's just not. You know you can blame for that, right? They do. They do still make it? Yeah. I, I don't. Who the can? libs. Okay. So. No, that, I don't, th that's not true. Um, I mean, it's changed you, because of political correctness for sure. But however, uh, like it still exists. No, I know. But it's it's not like it was a big deal. Back I think in the day. A, I think a bigger deal with that and with like Madden is multiple cover people. I think that, I hate that. Yeah, magazines should have one cover. Like you don't you like know? the regional. Oh, no, it's like yeah. I hate that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. There's like it should mean something to yeah. be the cover person. But what, I, that, I have like Marissa certain, Miller yep. with the iPod. Yes, see, yes. you remember now into yes. my memory. I, that's I truly what I mean. feel you know, like for the next you don't yeah. remember yeah. how long I live. I truly feel you don't know these now because they have eight people on the cover. I, I think that's part of the equation, but it's just been like it used to be something that was like it was like a talking point. Kim you, Kardashian was just on it. See, like, yeah. why the fuck? You know, like, who? What? Like, I yeah. would never have known that if you didn't say it. So, I do think that that is something that was like an iconic thing, and it had like a run for like 20, 25 years probably, and then now it's just like it's whatever. Like, no one even knows or cares. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's certainly it's certainly a good pick. But it goes the same way with all magazines, right? Like, Ma <sighs> like Maxim was fucking the thing for you a while. You know who the sexiest? Yeah, it could be like in the same vein. You could this. Very much applies to print mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it got swallowed and like the by cultural porno. significance, <laughs> right? Like the yeah. cultural significance, of it, like it's still there. I'm sure that you know the jugs are just as yeah, SI know. in general. Like, remember that was Great. like, oh, who's going to be on the cover for the MLB preview? You know, who are they going to yep. pick to win? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, Kerry Wood and Mark Pryor. Like, this is it's fucking a big awesome. Deal. And know? it used to be the thing that they would keep track of, like, who was on the most SI coverage. It's like, oh, Jordan's got six. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yes, Muhammad exactly. Ali had four. Exactly. You know, so it's Tiger a larger Woods. issue. Yeah. It's, it, so you could probably just say Sports Illustrated I mean, in it's general. A primary, like, spank bank source for many big yeah. time. for a long time. Big I, don't, time. I don't know if you could say that these days, right? Like, there's really not. You got a phone, right? Yeah. You got yeah. A, yeah. Endless options. Yep. 
Uh, Mr. Portnoy, you ever pick up a SI swimsuit edition? I can't. <laughs> I, I really don't remember. To say the truth. <laughs> Did you used to I, subscribe? I, I feel. I might have. You know something? I might have subscribed for a short time. Anything I ever see about Sports Illustrated within the last couple of years is how they're hurting financially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just not a growing business, and they have to do whatever they can do to keep it alive. I'm yeah. not sure whether somebody else even bought them. I I, I, I might be right or wrong about that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I and what you're saying about the swimsuit issue, it's not the deal that it used yeah. to be. There's no question about yeah. that. I think I remember hearing one time that the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue would pay for like the salary for like the rest of the year for yeah. the whole company. I've so seen like, things like that yeah. Too. So it was, it, and now that's probably that's definitely not the case anymore. It's just like another, I don't know. It's just like anything else. Like I don't, like I said, I didn't even know if it still existed, but it was such it was such a thing in the '90s and even the early 2000s you, that I thought it deserved can you a shout what, out. What it must be like to work someplace where everybody's getting laid off? I mean, I you know yeah. I shouldn't say everybody, but a good percentage because the business is is not doing well. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, people get late because that's what happens. Yep. Yeah, it's sink or swim. Mm-hmm. Carl, you're up. Not mad that you said it, Ed, but I had it circled. I'm taking Madden uh, chalk pick, but also a personal pick. Ah, sorry. Um, like the first Madden on 64 logged an incredible amount of hours in high school. I played online in college. You play online, and then it just you know this is a like you just lose personal interest because the game becomes more complicated. Um, and then they just never, there's no hook at any point. Like, yep. I think everybody has a moment over the last, like, you know, five, seven years where it's like, yeah, I'm going to run back Madden for a second. It's just like, nope, can't do it. Learning curve. As soon as you, it's not riding a bike. As soon as you get out of the Madden game, the Madden game's already passed you by. There's new people getting into it every day. Uh, I'm not even in a position to comment on, like, this Madden. I'm talking purely from the evolution of Madden. Like, the, the sound bites in the original Madden's of, like, Boom. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna need a stretcher for that one. Well, it's just obnoxious. It, now it's just it's it's yeah. Well, it was it was too Madden much. and Pat Summerall. Like mm-hmm. Pat Summerall's mm-hmm. voice coming across that video game was great. You know when they lost? I think I was in like high school, but I, and I think it's maybe like a cliche thing to say those passing cones. I it was like they went to passing cones and it was just never that QB vision. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. the QB vision was I. I that was when I, I was out. I believe yeah. that as well. That yeah. was like down, but also they just never changed anything. Like it's, it's the same like, thing. Every well, year. that's like, like I, what can you change th- at this were, point? There were only two video games that I ever really liked beyond like at, starting in high school. It was I would play FIFA and I would play the college football video game. And now there's like momentum, and it sounds like they're going to be coming out with college football on they PlayStation the players now, next so, year. Yeah. Is, is they're bringing it back, but they announced that they're just going to use like the same basic platform that Madden has. I'm like, well, then I don't really want to play because they used to be like markedly different, like in yeah. terms oh, of game time, yeah. gameplay and dude. For and the, I thought the college, college football better. game, I could literally make what my high school's field looks like to a T. We, I think and I, I would put in all the players that I played with and everything. I think I've told this story before. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How, but, ma- how many players would you? I mean, I would make my the like, whole entire roster. roster. Yeah, I I remember they had like one of the games had you could design your own playbook. And I like sat there for eight hours one time and like made my own playbook. You were an offense coordinator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, yeah. So. All downhill since good a truck stick. Yeah, yeah. You hit that, that little forward button, you're running over that everyone. Yeah. Jerome Bettis. I actually uh, never really liked sport games as a whole, though. Oh, they're great. I, th- I love. Mr. Like, Portnoy, do you respect John Madden as a coach? Did, was he? Uh, Are you glad he was died? Was he formidable? <laughs> John Madden? Yeah. All I remember about that, John Madden specifically is you're talking about that time when the Patriots were playing, and he said they're not going to go for it in that, uh, in the, I think it was the Super Bowl game, wasn't it? And he said they're not going to go for it. They turned around and ran down the field. Yeah, the first, the first uh, Brady I, one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to go back to one thing somebody said. I'd just be curious what you guys think. How many of you, you think people that listen to you know who Pat Summerall was? Uh, it's actually a good question, I man. You guys probably uh, do. I'm talking about your audience. It's a good mm. question. Yeah, like the 22 year old. Yeah, yeah, probably not. Senior in college, like, probably not, not many. many I, bet. Yeah. I, yeah. I still say he has like the best football broadcast voice. Like his, he had no questions. Awesome. No questions. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Back again. in those days, 
there were other good ones too. I can't think off the top of my head, but there, there were other. Paul Christensen. Anybody remember him? No. He was very good. I that used was to, even before you guys. Yeah, I used but, to love the old NFL films with John Facenda. Oh, the best. Yeah. The best. The, and I, you know, and I'm sure most of these kids today, I hate to be, get off my lawn again, but they, they, they have no idea who that was. Yeah. And how great those films were. Oh, even they were awesome. Son, yeah. Even my son, who's older than you folks, he knows all about that. Mm hmm. He knows all about that. Well, John Facenda was the best. Yeah, and I, I remember they used to have those um, leading up to the Super Bowl. They would have a marathon of every yes. suit, the half-hour highlight shows of every Super Bowl. And I, I feel like the last few years they stopped running those and stopped making them. And it's like, man, like that sucks. I used to love watching those that on like the Saturday NFL before. Films, yep. they, had the, they had the market cornered on what was great. Yep. You know? Yep. Carl? Yeah, I'm sounding like get off my lawn. I'm trying not to. <laughs> I don't do think so. I'm right there with you then, because you and I are agreeing on everything. I think you sound great, Mr. Portnoy. Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's a pick for you. Fourth round, uh, first pick of the fourth round. I'm just gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take Chicago's reputation. So I had it on there. I just. I just said Chicago. Like, I don't know. Forever, it was just awesome. Michael Jordan and fucking. You know, everybody's so proud. I don't know, just like all this bullshit. Now, when you get when we leave Chicago and you go somewhere, and someone's like, "Oh, where are you from?" You're like, "Chicago." They're like, "Ooh, watch out!" Yeah, yeah everybody. Shy, one shy, of the most right. common fucking chirp outside Chicago is like, "Oh, gee whiz!" And I used to defend it and be like, "Dude, it's not really like that." No. Like in different neighborhoods, now you can't really. But that's see, just the way. That now I'm not. I'm just saying, like the general way people talk, treat when you're outside of Chicago and interact with people. Uh, he's significantly, significantly, uh, significantly declined. Yeah, but I do think they're playing that to me. I don't understand what you're trying to say there. So, like the national perception of living in Chicago, where I think it's a you know beautiful, clean city. Obviously, we have our problems, much like many other large uh, urban metropolises of sorts. Uh, but it's at the point now where like it it would be a thing. You know, you'd leave Chicago. Would say like. I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, you'd be whatever. You're like, where are you from? I'm from Chicago. I'd be like, oh, dude, like the Cubs suck. You know, I'd be like, you know, fucking. Now they just bring Michael up crime Jordan. Nonstop. Like literally, the first first thing is uh, it was like, ooh, watch out, Chicago. Like people are like, how's Lori? Like everybody just loves shitting on Chicago, uh, and we get a lot of it. Yeah, we're in a position where we we get a lot of feedback from anonymous people uh, from many. Different parts yeah. of the and, country. And and to Dave's point, I do think uh, in the last two, three years, it's more warranted than it used to be. Sure, I'm not. Yeah. I don't know whether it's justified or not. Or yeah. just saying the. Are you talking uh, about sports? Or are you talking about in general? Just the overall perception of Chicago. Where I'm saying, like my, in my lifetime and my experience of being a young boy growing up in a city uh, run by you know like Mayor Daley with fucking Michael Jordan winning championships and like, you know. Yeah, it, it it's it, it used to be like one of the capitals of the world, so to speak. And like, it's still we're still a world class city. Yeah, what but I'm, I'm specifically calling out the the reputation and those interactions with like strangers and how people. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I I, I agree, and I don't even know if you need to say reputation. You can just say Chicago. Um, no, I'm not doing that. I'm I know, Chicago, but I'm you saying, could. How about how about outsiders' view of Chicago? Okay. I agree with what you're saying. I think it's yep. very negative. Yeah, I very much love the city and I'm proud of the city. I don't want to leave the city. I like very much. Yeah, one mm -hmm. time, uh, Mr. Porter, you it. called me about the feral cats letting being let out about the rat problem. So there, <laughs> yep. there you go. I remember that. Yep. At my old that apartment. Good, that was not a good headline. <laughs> no, it was this not. is even longer. My, it was not. Up fucking catch a bunch of feral cats um, behind my place. Yeah, I, I do think it has been going on for a while. I remember as a kid people being like, oh, like a, like a cab driver and like, oh, bang, bang, you know? But like, uh, certainly. Is that where it comes from? No, it, doesn't, it does not come Ed? from my cab driver in Myrtle Beach in 97. Did you ever want to be a cab driver? I mean, it certainly would be interesting. Good conversations. Uh, Chicago's reputation off the board chief mm, like i will i have i could i'm gonna get left off the graphic this week that's fine because i have one that i think would play but i'm gonna leave that alone because i have two other ones i want to talk about i'm gonna take breaking up 
breaking up back in the day before cell phones, social media, all that, you never have to see that person under any circumstances ever again. And that sounds spectacular to me. Now it's just like, you gotta see their babies. You gotta like, they can text you. It just makes the whole process like, a lot more sticky and emo like worse. It just makes it worse. I'd love to be able to just disappear after you want to like just part ways with somebody, and you just—it's just never really totally possible. Anymore. I don't know why you think that's a bad pick. It's a good pick. It's an awesome pick. Well, like just, you guys I mean, have I like Burger King up. and The Simpsons and like things that are like more institutions. Like these have to be explained. So like you could say White Sox Davis is like chalk as hell. I think you have some good picks. Chalk gets you on the graphic. Yeah, but um, who gives a shit about But yeah, that? I do think that I I think it just makes it so much so much harder just in today's people dating. In general, yeah, yeah. Dr. Zeitler on the graph, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you need to get <laughs> no disrespect Eddie, uh, picture sure. of yeah. uh, Dr. Zeitler. Zeitler. Bro, a thousand percent. Yeah. yeah. Of course. It's just people in general. If they're like you used to be able to avoid anybody you wanted to. Yeah. Now you can't. Right. Do people even break up anymore? Instagram stories, like pictures, yep. like check in locate. Oh fuck, they're here. Yeah. Oh shit, they're in a relationship with that person. Right. Why the fuck should you know who she's dating? Now? I, I don't want to know <laughs> exactly. that. I don't no, want to know that. Exactly. Yeah. And no. it's like, and then God forbid, like you're in a situation where you're having a moment of weakness, and like you know that girl is trouble, and then she likes a picture or like you're responds back. to your story, <laughs> and you slide back in, and it's a whole mess all over again. Our parents' yep. generation, that would not have happened because you'd have to like pick up the phone and have a conversation and no one really wants to do that. So that's just like an, in, yes. it's like an invisible force field is having a dial on the phone yes. as opposed to just a text or respond to a story or something like that. You so, ran into Betty at the pharmacy, yeah. right, Mr. Portnoy? Yep. Yeah, I'm familiar with that situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so breaking it up. It was different. Yeah. It's a good pick. Well, I think it's an excellent pick. Yeah. All right, to me, I mean, I'm going to kind of go in the same vein. It might be cliche because it's talked about to wit's end, but just conversations have gone downhill drastically because everyone's looking at their fucking phone. Yeah, so I had one of them. Conversations. On, yeah. On I my, mean, it's. On my list, I just had, like, being in the moment. Yeah. You know, which is a similar sort of thing yeah. because it's – even if you, like, I love that fucking um, – the trumpet, Timmy Trumpet at the Mets – but like I think Dave said it on your show, they they pan to the crowd. Everyone's just there with their phones out. So instead yeah. of like like getting into it, and enjoying it, everyone's like, "No, I gotta tweet this." And it's like that kind of like that sucks. I'd rather yeah. just like be in the moment and, and we'd have be a those good, assholes for yeah. sure. For sure, yeah. Like truly, I just remember being at the park with my friends, just dipping massive spit piles and just talking about nothing. Yeah, you know, fucking around with their bikes. And like, yeah, you just talk. I gotta tell you, you something. Lighting shit on fire in the woods. Yes. Yes. The, uh, yes. So. Every morning I wake up at around 6.30 to take my dog for his first walk of the day. And I only go around the blocks like five, seven minute walks just to let him do his thing in the morning and we go back in. And every single morning I see this same lady that's walking her dog. And she uh, told me about this park. It's about an eight minute walk uh, southwest of me. And I didn't know it existed. And it's like dog paradise there. And I've been driving to the West Loop Dog Park every day. And it's a pain in the ass because you got to drive through the West Loop traffic, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. I get there. And this dude that I would see at the West Loop Dog Park, he just stopped going. And he was the only one there I'd enjoy having conversation with. And this guy is probably 60 years old, but he knows all the sports teams and he's fun to talk to, blah, blah, blah. I see him at this new dog park and he offered me a high noon. He had them at the dog park. I obviously obliged him. And I didn't look at my phone for like an hour and a half while I was talking to this guy. I literally got home and I texted a friend of mine. I don't know even how we were got into the conversation, but I was like, I just didn't look at my phone for like 90 straight minutes, and it was unbelievable. You survived. Yep. You survived. Yeah. I didn't even realize time had gone that fast. I'm like, holy shit, we've been here an hour and a half. And uh, I didn't look at my phone, had great conversation. I'm like, I almost forgot what this feels like. I'm sure you agree with this pick, Mr. Portnoy. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I go watch my uh, grandchildren play sports, and I – and. I've been guilty too. I try to get away from it. I see these people are holding up their phones. They're not even watching what's actually happening just so they can record it. Yep. I mean, it, it's stupid. Yeah. So you got to stop yourself. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had to watch the last episode of uh, House of the Dragon twice because yeah. I was staring yeah, at my phone. That's true yeah. too. Yeah. And how many times is like, oh wait, sorry, what'd you say? I was uh, I had to do this. Doing and you're something. just constantly yeah. restarting conversations, yep. or you're talking to a zombie who's like, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm guilty of it. Yep. Everyone is, but I like what? the rule. Like I, I know I I, I, yeah. I do it a lot. I like the rule that if like you're out to dinner with a group, it's just phones in the middle. Like yeah. no, one, like that. You just make it a rule. No one can be dicking around on their phone. Another thing that I used to like to do as part of this conversation thing, you could just argue about facts all day. <laughs> like someone's right, but you're like, no, I think he he went to this school, and I think he went to that school, yeah. and then you would just argue about like some stupid sports thing or some stupid thing, as opposed to being like, oh. Yeah, and you can just it look up. it up. But yeah. like being able to just argue about something that is definitely one thing or another, but being at a stalemate, <laughs> yeah. it, that used to be fucking great. Now yeah. it's just everyone has every... I think now people look it up before they even get to a stalemate. Yeah. 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 True. Mm-hmm. Yep. Conversations is my pick. Um, Mr. Porter, you're up. I'm running out of things here, already. It's all right. You only <laughs> need two more. We'll, we'll get through. All right. Anybody know who uh, Richard Quest is? Yeah, that name sounds familiar. I don't. I do not. He, as a guy from England, and of course he was on this morning on CNN with the death of the Queen and whatnot, but Richard Quest always reminded me of one of the characters on the Jeffersons. Anybody ever watch the Jeffersons? Yeah, great theme song. Yeah, and the guy there was a guy on there that was from England, one of the, one of the permanent characters on that show and he whenever i would see him he would always me remind me this guy maybe all english people remind me of the same people i don't know this guy richard quest sounded like him and looks like him and that was my thing somebody that was on the jeffersons many years ago <laughs> so dick, he how the quest off the board how has he gone downhill though oh because it's the, i i don't like the real guy that Richard Quest. <laughs> All right. I, I, I just don't like him. He's not necessarily down. I just don't like him. All right. Yeah. You know why? I'm going to tell you why if you give me a second. They he, use this the real Richard Quest. He's there on CNN if there was a plane crash. If somebody got shot or if he's going on a movie review. I mean, he runs the gamut of serious things to life-threatening things all in the all at the same time. I never cared for that. I like specialists. So you don't want the CNN Richard Quest? No. But so, he's, th- he's there because the Queen died. I hadn't seen him in a while. All right, so Richard Quest from the Jeffersons. <laughs> yeah, I think I like him better. <laughs> or they just the, the name same. Richard Quest because Richard Quest was good on the Jeffersons, but now when you see the name Richard no, the Quest, you get mad the, because... I don't know what the guy's name was on the Jeffersons. I know I'm confusing people. I don't know what the actor was that was on the quest. On but the he reminded Jeff- you of Just Richard the name Quest. Richard yes, he Quest. Reminded, he reminds right. me of Richard Quest. Right. And who he, is on CNN. Right. They sound and look alike. And you just prefer hey, I'm running the out fake. of material here. I'm doing the best I can. He is just doesn't Tommy? like the guy. No, but sincere. this is like I have no idea what he's talking your about. image no. of a guy. I think it's Franklin Cover. Did I, do I have the right guy? I wouldn't know the guy's real name. His name was Tom Willis in the show? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Yes. Tom Willis. Uh, yes. So, so your pick is Tom Willis. From yeah. Tom Willis descending into a guy that reminds you of Tom Willis, who you don't like as much as Tom Willis. Yes. That's okay. exactly right. Okay. All right. So right. I Character Tom to explain, Willis. I don't think I should have to explain these things. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I'm with you. I, I saw it. I, I don't. But follow. just in like a couple <laughs> couple words, like you know, like six words or less, Mister Portnoy. How would you? Um, I think Chief whittled it down as much yeah, just, as you can yeah. get. Yeah, well, yeah, we got it. Just what, have, what, have I'm sorry, Jack what do was a really it? small font. What's the question? <laughs> what's the question? So, what's your answer in as yeah, in few your own words as in your own words, Counselor? What is um what is your pick? Well, why is it going downhill? No, just like what's the pick? What 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 is the name oh. of the pick? Like, if you had to give this an official name, what would it be? The Jefferson. How's that? The Jeffersons. Okay, I, I'm going to put uh, Tom Willis, parentheses from the Jeffersons. That's what all I'm right. Going thank with. you. Right. To I Richard Quest. Yes. Yes. White Sox, Dave. Uh, I'm going to go with Facebook. I used to sit on Facebook Messenger for like hours and hours in college, and I I tried logging into it the other day. I had to change the password, and no one's written on my wall since my last birthday, which is almost a year ago. 
Um, I gave it a quick scan, nothing but politics, and I'm like, I am fucking out of here. And uh, I had to, I, the only reason I logged in, it was against my will, is because I needed it to log into something that I used it, Facebook, to log mm-hmm. in with. Yeah, I, I bounced on Facebook during the uh, Romney Obama election mm-hmm. cycle. I was like, I can't. Now everybody's aunts on there. Your parents are on there at that point. It's just like, it's like is, a joke at this point. Like, oh, yeah. that's a Facebook crowd. Yeah. Yeah. So, you still go on Facebook, Mr. Portnoy? Do I? Yeah. No. No. Okay. Facebook yeah. spent more time down than up, though. Like, it was only up for, like, my freshman year. Yeah, March. And then by the time we were graduating, it was like, pfft, yeah. Cool. But it's, it's, it's like, on. Unviewable now. Yeah. You think he looks like my son? Who? Mark Zuckerberg? Zuckerberg? Yeah. The young picture. He like the thousand percent. The baseball picture, yes. Yeah. Yes. They look like they could be cousins like for sure. Not cousins. Like, they look like the same person. No, I mean, even now, I mean. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I would say brothers even. What? I didn't hear what you said. What would you say? I said that they look like they could be related now. I do think there's a similarity. But I think I think Dave is more handsome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's true. I do. Smart, smart, <laughs> smart remark by you. <laughs> uh, Speaking of Zuckerberg, did anybody David. listen to his Rogan interview? Not it yet. freaked no, I me out. It freaked me out. I've only seen the clip. He's Not basically yet. trying to make it so you can be present in like a different. So say a, you don't want to go to your aunt and uncle's house. Mm-hmm. He wants to make it so you can be present there with like if I'm in the office through like some AI bullshit. I don't even know how to describe it, but he described it in layman's terms. And it's like, if he does this, like I'm out on the world. So, yep. Facebook, um, good pick, Dave. What's your next one? My last one, this is one that I hope you all agree with me. I know Carl does, uh, Chief does, Mr. Portnoy, I would hope you do too. I'm just going with competitiveness. Good pick, Dave. The <laughs> fucking Little League World Series hug made me sick to oh, my stomach. Oh boy. It made me sick. To I hated stomach. that too. Hit me in my sweet spot there. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Portnoy. Yeah. Thank you. It That's made a, me sick to my worse. stomach. I said my dad would beat my ass. I didn't mean that literally. He would have absolutely scolded me and said, "Don't fucking do that shit again." Like that's a baseball field. You're they're your enemy until after the last pitch is recorded in the game. Um, I would slide up like I would play dirty when I was playing, mm-hmm. um, which I wouldn't try to hurt anybody. I would just try no, to make them feel like. shithead. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, hurt not in. White, yeah. White Sox, Dave. Little League Baseball and baseball have nothing to do with each other, first of all. And again, which I guess has been my theme for this whole time we've been doing this, the answer to all your questions about that is money. I cannot believe it. it is so overproduced. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Definitely. the things that they, I don't want to see some 12 year old kid dance before the game. I, I mean, it's just, and you know that there's, I, and I, you know something? I've looked this up to see how much the CEO makes. Trust me, millions it's not a probably. Small amount of money. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it's disgusting. Yeah. Does he deserve so, yeah, it or it she deserve disgusting. it for negotiating the big contract with no, ESPN? No, I mean, that. I, I, mean, I know they're a pivotal I'm, player in securing uh, in securing that deal. And these twelve year olds are indentured. Might just sit here and it, shit on a CEO. Yeah. For but that's a not even. Money. It's not even just there. Well, his, his pick is just people. It's like, like frowned. A, it's frowned upon to be like a fierce competitor. Yeah, I'll spend yeah. half an hour on Little League though. Yeah, uh, we could. Yeah, see, I don't that's think, just one don't little think, fraction yeah. of of the problem. See, though. I don't think it has anything to do with any of that. I think it's just overproduced that. It's got really, I mean, you honestly think these men, <laughs> I, my kids were in Little League, my son was in Little League, so I'm in a very competitive area. Mm-hmm. I never met any manager that was anything like these guys that come out and want to talk about the psychology of what this kid is doing and that sort of thing. It, it, it's not like, it, it's just a business. It's just another freaking business. Yeah. I can't stand it. The commercials. It, I, I, look, it's just, again, it's all about money. It's they just gotta, an example, gotta, though. It's just it's just one example of his pick, of, of yeah. the competitiveness. Uh, the, the pick is, right. so my it's not is just like series. the general competitiveness, yeah. Mr. Like Portnoy. It's frowned so, upon to like want to beat your... To be an asshole on the field. Like, was it, David very competitive as a young boy? Uh, he had to have been. Hold on a second. Now. Yeah, right? He was very competitive, I'm going to give right? you an answer. It's going to surprise you. He was the type of person... That if he was competitive, 
you couldn't really tell because he was very laid back about things. He was very, he, my, my daughter was the exact opposite. If there was a line, my daughter would be the first and first one in line. He would be the last one in line. Did he want to win? Sure he wanted to win. But you could, and people always said that about him, that, that, that he always seemed to get where he wanted to get by being laid back. Mm-hmm. People, people were relaxed with him. You know what I mean? They didn't feel that this is someone's trying to take advantage of me, that sort of thing. And that's that today. He still, even though he's screaming and yelling, he, you know, he could always sell stuff because it didn't. You didn't feel like he was high pressuring, yeah. high pressuring you to buy things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But going back to the little league, I, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and I think it's got nothing to do with twelve-year-old kids playing baseball, and that's the problem that I have with it. I think you picked the little league, Dave. I, I mean, it, Look, I think we just have to I, give that's you a little. The, that's the easiest example right but now. I think competitiveness is a great pick. Yeah, I think you yeah, it, yeah. That. But all, we, I mean, we we're just on little league. Yeah. So that's my. But thing. like, did you guys bring up the NBA? Do you want to try? We can try. Okay, no, I'm we just have saying, it. Like, yeah, yeah, no, like where ahead. Jordan wanted to fucking murder everyone. Oh, yeah, and, and now Kobe it's just and like KG, oh. and I feel like after Kobe and KG, everyone's like, just best friends. But like Mr. Porter, I said it's all about money. It's all about the branding. After, if I'm yep. next to LeBron, maybe I'll be in clutch. You know, it's all about. Yep. USA there's basketball. Different, yes, there's and, different yeah. motives, different goals. I, I just watched, as a little aside, I guess we're running out of time here, but I just watched a documentary on Netflix, if you get to see it, about that referee that got trouble. Tim Donahue. Uh, yes. Anybody watch that? I have. Netflix? Not yet. you got to oh, watch it. I've seen the. If you got to watch it, you'll never bet on an NBA game the rest of your life. And I'll tell you why. Because the ref, referees can control the outcomes of these games. He wasn't betting directly on it, but he was involved with people mm-hmm. who were. And when they, when he, he was only predicting and telling them who he thought was going to win. He wasn't, there was no evidence that he was placing X amount of dollars on a game, but he was right so many, so many times. His percentage was so many high, so high that really <laughs> betting on basketball, you ought to talk to him if you want to mm-hmm. come out ahead. Yeah. yeah. All right, competitiveness, Dave. Uh, Mr. Portnoy, your last pick. All right, I forgot this. I saw. I just saw her to mention. Anybody know who I, I'd just be curious here. Anybody know who Anthony Joshua is? The boxer. Yeah. Yeah. You all know? Okay, that's good. Because when I was a kid, that and even now, it's kind of still my favorite. One of my – that and horse racing are my favorite sports. He's going to fight Tyson Fury soon, mm-hmm. even though Tyson Fury said he wasn't going to box again. Yeah, he just says we all knew again. anybody who pays yeah. attention yeah. to it. He was going to he was going to fight again. The price apparently is right, but boxing he said half a bill, right? At, at, what's that? He said half a bill. He'll come back. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to get something like that. But when I was much much younger, you talked about uh, Ali Frazier. Yeah, uh, all these heavyweights. And then you could even go down to Hagla Hearns, which was one of the great, most exciting. I went with a friend of mine to Hagla Hearns. If you've ever seen films of that oh, yeah. on 3030, I want to tell you, we stood up for the whole time. You just stood up. It was so freaking exciting, you know, and talk about things that have gone downhill. There's nothing like that now. Nothing. Mr. Portnoy, there's, so a, boxing. there's a great four part documentary. Um, called The Kings. It was on Showtime. Did I you... saw it. Okay, so that was all the guys you're talking about. Sugar Ray, yeah. uh, Marvin Sugar Hagler, Ray. Roberto Durant. Yeah. It, it was an Absolutely. awesome. Yeah, that was wonderful. Great that was documentary. Wonderful. And I think that's a great pick. I love boxing, but I just, I've just i fallen off of it. I used, to, I used to follow Canelo and watch his fights, but there is no, you know, and Tyson Fury's you great. You guys into the kickboxing? See, I'm not. I, 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 I haven't I have been able to. I have into it big time, and it's insanely, insanely entertaining. It really is. Okay. And it's, it's super fast-paced, so you can watch 15, 18 fights in like a six-hour span, and if you're not doing anything, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I never thought I'd like it at all, but I've gotten really into it. But boxing, it's not what Marquise it was. Marquise of Queensbury is the best thing on earth just like traditional boxing yeah and it's not a thing anymore even the last tyson fury fight like they're coming in on like thrones and and have like yeah it, well right i don't that's, like all that shit that, they, you know they model that after rocky mm-hmm. yeah that's what nah, they i guess did in the so movie yeah rocky. yeah 
but the pageantry is part of it. Though, it is. No, I, I, that's fine. But that that like they've gone overboard for me. But Eddie, the pageantry, when the fights were more like when Ali fought Frazier, you didn't need any pageantry to get right. attention. Yeah. yeah, it was a fight itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it you know, but it, I mean, Ali it was like the Ali Buma Yeah, like they you know he would like oh, you know, he had, absolutely against George Foreman. Yeah, you watch the films. Yeah, I love that stuff. Yeah, I absolutely love that stuff. And I don't think th I don't. Th I feel like, and I could be wrong, and it was misreported and correct, but it feels like like a, like the heavyweight championship of the world or a huge, huge fight felt like it captivated the world the way the Super Bowl does now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. just not the case. So even when Ali Bombay. Yeah, and it, like so and when it, Fury. You're right. It was Showtime that that documentary, The Three Kings, was it? I think called? it was four, but yeah, The Kings. Kings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. I want to tell you something that there's nothing like it. Yeah. Nothing like it. I think that's a great pick. Boxing is a great pick. Yep. Uh, to me, um, yeah, I mean, we want to talk about, it hasn't been picked yet. I know it may have been talked about before the show, but uh, it's Game of Thrones. I mean. I See, I think that's not, I don't think you should be able to pick that. Why is that? Because. You don't think it, You don't think there's an argument to be made that the show went downhill? But then you could say that about, like, the Chicago Blackhawks or the New York Yankees or anything that well, was no. there's a finite ending. Yeah, there's this. a finite ending. But That's he is a crazy argument. You could pick Blackhawks, too. <sighs> But no, like it's it's a I don't know I I don't think I don't think that's the spirit of this draft. No way, chief. We're talking about a, like Michael Jordan, like yeah. just fell off a cliff in '95, like when he came back. Like this show was goat status. It yeah. would have been the greatest like, of all goat time. Goat status. I truly like, think so. Like hysteria. Like the world would gather around their TVs, and they fucking flopped for the last I've, two seasons. I feel like I every it. almost every show faces that. Almost, not everyone though. But m m most shows. But I don't understand how you can not think it's draftable. How is that because not draftable? But Simpsons is. Because Simpsons had like a thirty-year run, but and, and it's, it's like, still going. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I don't see how you can say that's not draftable. I, I, that to me, like when we're talking about what we do here, that that to me is not in the spirit of what we're doing. Whereas we're talking about ESPN and MTV and you know things Why, that just, just don't they hit still the exist? same way. Yeah, and, they, and and like Game of Thrones, like they just couldn't land the plane. Like that was, that was it. But it was like, yeah, it went downhill at the. You know, I would say the last season, and um, it was I don't really get why bad. People say the last two because the second to last I loved. Yeah, I'm, 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 the I'm, that's just when the new writers took over. Yeah, or whatever. I don't know. I I mean, I'm not going to veto it, but I don't think that that f like if you're going to play the game of which one of these doesn't belong with everything else on this list, I think that's the one you circle. I don't think so. I don't think people will think that. We'll, no. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Um, but, like, that can't be, like, it's so different than your previous pick of, like, conversation. Like, that to me is something that, that used to be great and had specific things that, you know, like, that was, to me, that's the spirit of this draft. Oh, well, what do you want me to say when it was? No, I mean, you it, took Game of Thrones, but I don't, I don't think that that's, like. But I like can give a, you reasons why is my point. You know, well, like the could, reasons why are obvious that it obviously didn't end well, but it's not the they same filmed as the like fucking, a, they filmed a battle in the dark. Yeah, it was a like, stupid decision. That's yeah. bad. Should have done bad. it at dawn. I still love that episode. I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's I know a, I'm that's the minority. My favorite bad. thing. Yeah. Ever. Uh, all right. No, I respect your opinion. Yep. But I, I, is that, I don't think we have a veto then, right? No, I'm not vetoing. What do you think, Tom? Like, is that draftable or no? Yeah, no, I was just confused of uh, <clears throat> what she was like. Uh, if you're saying it because it was already a finished thing, but I think. It definitely did go downhill. It, yeah, it I don't know did, how it didn't go downhill. It oh, it definitely ended poorly. I don't think it went downhill. I think it fell over a cliff. I mean, to no, say I it ended it was, poorly, to say it went downhill is is very similar. I don't get yeah, but would you ended. say that that is in line with anything else that's been drafted? I would say yeah, no. I got. I think it's, Adam Sandler movies. I think there's a little crossover with Facebook. If we're going to play, it's a relatively recent card. I think there's less of a crossover with Madden, but enough to make an argument. Uh, Simpsons being on the board too without any argument is, without is compelling. An, even no if it's like well it's been around for yeah. 33 still, years it the, is the still. general concept of it started great and it has gone downhill um, and then like the, the other thing just complete oddball if I was making a legal argument Mr. Porno I'd finish with Dr. Ziegler or whatever be like if that you, thing's on the board anything's on the board at this point like that kind of sets a tone that this is like a Mr. off Port the rails on what is it I'm, I'm confused what are you talking about <laughs> Game of Thrones. Did you watch Game of Thrones, Mr. Pornoy? 
No. No. Not one episode. So the first six seasons were, it, like, most people thought it had a chance at ending up as the greatest TV show in the history of television. And then the last season, everybody is universally disgusted over it to this day. Like, if MASH sucked the you last about, season. You talk about Game of Thrones. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The last season was horrific, and everybody thinks so. It's our generation's mash. Look, I'm going to tell you something. I had a, a very simple standard for some, and I'm going to name the show, which I know you must all know. This is a great show, The Sopranos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Sopranos, and my I had a very simple standard for these shows. If the episode I was watching, number one, went by so fast. As I watched it, I thought I was sitting for five minutes. Number two, you would always wait as it ended for the next episode. And people would be talking about what they had just seen, which I know came, Game of Thrones was the same way mm -hmm. from what I understand. But The Sopranos, definitely like that. I mean, that was one of my favorite shows of all time the acting and everything. And I always liked the mafia stories and whatnot. I was a big Godfather fan. Uh, so that to me, and then the, way before then, of course, now I forgot the name. Uh, there was a soap opera Western that did the same thing. It was, uh, these people lived in a big ranch in Texas and there were very, there was a, you know, a drama and they were very wealthy and whatnot. And they were stabbing each other in the back all the time. I just drew a blank on the name, but that was way before then, mm -hmm. uh, way before The Sopranos. But I, 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 you, does The Sopranos compare at all with you folks as far as the quality of yeah, it? Yeah, we all love Game The Sopranos. Of Thrones? I would say, yeah. and I didn't like the last handful of seasons of The Sopranos either. Okay, yeah. but I would, I, I love Sopranos, obviously. Yeah, but we all loved it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I don't know. I guess to to end it here before we move on. Um, I don't, then I guess no shows technically that are over could be could have been drafted in your in your mind. Yeah, like I, I, like, I could like have the Office went downhill. I would it never even occurred to me to draft The Office. But like, I think if someone did, I'd be like, oh, good pick. Mm. Yeah, I mean, right. Like I could say one that's still on the air right now that I like thought about. The only thing is, I think here it's a good pick because like The Simpsons to me, um, you know, the fact that it's extended and drawn out kind of takes away from like the downhill because the slope is is more gradual. gradual That's what I said. Day. Like it, it's Game of Thrones is off a cliff. So not even downhill. Which I think makes it a good pick. If to Eddie's point, if you went office, I think that's totally valid because it fits the spirit of like, yeah, this was fucking awesome. It was captivating. What? People loved it. And then it went downhill and now the reputation or the, the way we see it is like, yeah, that's just not it just isn't what it used to be. Yeah. yeah. I would go use the Sopranos because I'm thinking about the last episode. But I'm starting when nobody knew yeah. nobody knew what the hell happened, and the people were talking about well this happened or that happened, and nobody knew. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see somebody get killed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I did. do understand Chief's point now that I'm talking it out, saying that like now that the thing is over, like the concept it's, of like it it's going downhill like it went you just downhill. look back at game of thrones and you're like that's just not yeah yeah, yeah. like it could be a bus draft type deal yeah but like to your point yes. i think it fits the definition closer to you i'm just saying like because i'd be dead honest with you like i don't want to like get into an argument i had no fucking clue where you were coming from for a while <laughs> yeah i mean, like i thought it was one of the more I, but, but now that i say it i do kind of see where but like from. these these are to me this was like almost grander conversations for the lart for the most part you know journalism comedies presidents you know all these different things that used to be better because that's how you framed it before it used to yeah, be better yeah, yeah. and now it's something else and if, well if it's it not ended. something it's else not now current, it's just yeah, yeah, not yeah. there no i get what you're saying yeah i get what you're saying so but mm -hmm. um all right then you're up all right well this is gonna sound so stupid now but i'm uh, taking the office no <laughs> The future, like you know, I think of like Back to the Future too. Like the way we used to conceptualize the future was like we're gonna have fucking hovercrafts and flying cars and like instant all sorts of everything. And now it's just like, well, the planet's gonna fall apart. It's gonna be World War Three. It's all when you talk about the future, it's we don't have any energy. We're gonna be in World War Three. The planet's gonna be on fire. Like every like everything is like an apocalyptic future. 
And I feel like 20 years ago, we talked about the future, like it's gonna be fucking awesome. And now it's just like everybody is so pessimistic about the future. And I had a conversation about this draft and I told the person I was gonna take this last and they were like, don't do that. That's really fucking stupid. That's a chief pick. <laughs> and I'm like, know what? I don't care. I wanna say that because I do think like, I think of like back to the future two. It was supposed but to be 2015 and we're going to be can something go downhill that hasn't occurred yet it's like a a not like it's how we conceptualize the future that is happening right now it's like how we talk about the future i mean i get it but that's just a no i think that's a great pick are you are you know, i know what you're saying yeah thank you i know you. what you're saying you go back a few years ago before this country got involved in all these things and whatnot yeah everybody it seemed like people were a lot more optimistic yeah all right and now no right for, for many reasons for yeah. yeah and i think it's been that way really for like maybe i don't know since it's been trending that way maybe since 9 11 where it's just like hey we got this war and then we got the financial crisis and then we got one thing after another and it's like now like literally life expectancy in the united states is going down and it's so it's like we have like a different view of the future that is like view of the future view of the that. future is not yeah your yeah. view of the future, view of the future. Right. yeah so yeah i'm gonna tell you folks because you're much too young a big point in my life was john f kennedy okay mm -hmm. when he got assassinated how old were you do you remember it yeah i was in high school okay i was uh, i think a junior in high school mm -hmm. and i want to tell you even today that's one of the mom one of the most momentous. I, I don't mean in a good way, obviously. Yeah, one of the real important things in my life because you got to understand, people my age and I guess most Americans never even contemplated a president being assassinated. Yeah, it was just so you know beyond what you would even. And then from that minute, it seemed like so many th and things did bad things did happen. Mm -hmm. We were on a downward slide of just negative things. Yep. Up until that point, uh, uh, you know, John F. Kennedy was a, a young guy, so vibrant and whatnot. And at, at my age, I'm very impressionable then. And a uh, turning point for something that didn't affect me, you know, immediately or my yeah. immediate family had a big effect on me and, and most people my age. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think uh, once Neuralink comes out, then we'll be excited again. I don't know enough once about that. Once what comes out? Neuralink, the That's Elon where you Musk. Put chips where you, in your brain? Yeah, where you put a chip in your brain, and I'm we're going to know. I'm going to pass on that. I could use that. that, Eddie. Yeah, we're going to have access. <laughs> I'll take one of those. Yeah, we'll give you a chip. We'll have access <laughs> to all information uh, possible. Yeah. Like that pill that uh, Bradley Cooper took in that movie. What was it, like Invincible or something? No. It wasn't limitless. 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 Yeah, yeah, it was not a good movie. It wasn't good. Yeah. All right. View of the future. Uh, all right. Last pick of the draft, Carl. Mr. Relevant. Um, I just I have a couple here. I was thinking about like export, uh, New, New Year's Day bowl games, business casual. You brought up the Tim Donahue doc documentary and one mixtapes. Those those were sweet, but um, I I just want to take old people. Taking old people. Um, Thank you. Yeah. When I was like a kid, <laughs> grandparents were so, uh, it just felt, I don't know, it was just like a different vibe. Um, they went through more shit. They had cooler stories. Yeah, they like fought, fought World War II. And, they yeah. cooked for 12 and yep. uh, went bowling and shit. They were, yep. Mr. they Portland. built the interstate. Like it, that, yeah. the generation above, I don't know. And the obviously golden, I'm yep. biased because it's like, yeah, well, both my grandfathers were in the war. And, yep. um, you know, it was just like, and now old people won't retire. And back when I was a kid, like, it would be like, oh, what happened? Like, oh, my grandfather died. Like, oh, I'm sorry to hear what happens. Like, oh, he died of old age. There was just like so many people just die of old age. And I'm getting very depressed listening to this. I'm just saying that like the concept of getting old now, like I, being a kid, there was no such thing as like a cool, oh, he's a cool grandpa. They were just like fucking grandpas and they had authority yeah. and you fucking listen to them. Yep. And now it's like getting old is lame. and. You know, staying young and being cool and like, no, like I said, nobody will retire. Our generation got fucked so hard. It's impossible yep. to own property. It's impossible to get promoted. If you want to climb in corporate America, you have to go job hop. There's no such thing as loyalty. 
And, it, and a lot of it is because of you guys. And not you guys, but like your generation. Yeah, or the generation <laughs> immediately, like my parents. My parents are like 62 and 65 or six. And I feel like it's that, like them. Like they just go away. Go yeah, away. like, no, but no, they're going on vacation and they're yeah. like, you know, active and doing all the stuff yeah. where like, come on guys, Fuck it's off. our time. Like yeah. it's, it's our time. And, and I feel like our generation more than any other generation uh, for a lot of reasons, is just still sitting here waiting, being like, hit the, f and I mean, sure, at a very high institutional level, way. all leadership, all decision making, yeah. everything still lives and resides with people, uh, you know, the, the old people. Yeah. And again, when we were younger, it's like, Dude, we're all retired. Every old person was retired when I was a kid. What yeah, do you do? Yes, and you want to say to them, get the F out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they always say like how bad millennials are. That's all I ever hear about. Like they're the ones who put in all the policies that led us to this place where we suck. So it's like you guys made all the rules. We're just playing you by the rules. Us. Yeah, that you guys set up, stole everything. <laughs> yeah, nobody could get when I. I don't know. This is tough for you right nobody now. Nobody could get hired out of college too. Like yep. The, well, that was that yeah, fucking uh, thing. That was tough. I, was, I graduated in '09, right after, right when the uh, recession. Yeah, the Great yeah. Recession. And so. we've just we're like guinea pigs and all yep. these. We're like have ushered in the internet era like we've t we've taken it and the old people don't they have no respect for us like yep. i hate it when an old person's like, all right In you kids day. it's like dude i'm 35 like, i'm old as f i look like i'm seven i'm old i'm getting up there but i'll never ever ever feel like i have that and it's like who made the respect. decision to make burger king shitty somebody in that old, generation someone old fucked up an yeah, old guy did right it used to be real meat and you know shit flame broil all that Dude, why are there no sucks. more comedies go through the, yeah. the amount of like journal go through this whole thing and i guarantee you it's someone no in their 60s point, right? there's just old people fucking stuff up yeah and they're just facebook you know, Give the, we never should have taught well, him how to use Excel. We uh, we never should have taught uh, him anything. Let, let's hear the rebuttal here. Let's hear the rebuttal. You guys just avalanched on the man. Yeah, sorry. Don't take that personally, Mr. Portnoy. No, I'm not taking that personally. Look, I'm, I am out of the way. I don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, thank I'm, you. I'm gonna, yeah, see, you get it, Mr. Portnoy. If you're not succeeding, don't look to me. I'm yeah. not doing anything. I I'm don't know. Out of the way. What if someone argued that you know you took away a, a 9 a.m. slot on a, a Sirius <laughs> XM radio station from a young strapping employee at Barstool Sports? Yeah, and what happened to that? <laughs> what was the end result? I got, I got. According to that logic, I got what was coming to me. I got, I got axed. Yeah, you got laid <laughs> off. <laughs> I got laid off. Yeah. And that's what you guys want to see happen. You happy now? I would have been happier if you voluntarily stepped aside yeah. and said it's somebody else's time. Yeah, because you knew. Yeah. You, know. <laughs> you know something? With what I was making for money, I could have very easily done that. I just didn't. <laughs> what were you making? Zero. <laughs> 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 See, you they, they're all about cutting costs. costs. I didn't cost you a penny. Yeah. <laughs> well, who is that guy you said you hated that works for us? Forget about. <laughs> ah, I thought I, thought <laughs> I might be able to Let get me, you there. I want to clarify something. I didn't like what you just said. I don't like the word hate. I don't. I don't hate like that anybody. word either. I, I, that's not right. I hate a few people, but they have nothing to do with any of this. Stuart Scott. There's some people. There's a couple people. A couple that I don't think. Uh, what's the right word? And they, and they're somewhat popular, but I don't think that they're. I can't think of the right word. What am I trying to say, Eddie? What? What? I'm trying to think. You of the just right don't. Word. You I don't. Won't. You don't understand the appeal. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, you don't understand. I don't the understand. It's Whitney, the isn't it? You can tell me. <laughs> no, it's wink, I'm wink not at me if that. it's Whitney. Get out of here! I'm not doing that. <laughs> you, you saying it's it's you're not going to answer the question that answers the question no, right there. No, I know you don't. Don't try that trick on me. <laughs> I use that trick all the time. Don't do that. You're not going to get anywhere with me. That's <laughs> Whitney. I should have even brought it up. That Just strong last pick. Fucking curly Good headed. last pick. Fuck. Uh, good, uh, good passion behind your argument, too. I appreciate Thank that. Thank you. I didn't get where you were you're old. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fucking stupid, but <laughs> when you said everything behind Every answer on yeah. this draft is because, like, it's all bad because of old people. I was like scanning through it. I'm like, he's yeah. pretty much right. And, and it's, it's like the generation, like, just everything you hate about Jerry Reinsdorf fits that. Like, I hate yeah, that. Man. It's that generation. Yeah, but the, also, yeah. I don't know. What? What's our, wrong well, like, like, all right. I'll, let me run down the list. We'll do honorable okay. mentions real quick. We'll get out of here. But, like, there's no peeps. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, all right. Uh, White Sox, Dave, ESPN, The Simpsons, Adam Sandler movies, Facebook, competitiveness, 
Mr. Portnoy, L.L. Bean, Dr. Zietler, uh, <laughs> college sports transfer rules, Tom Willis from the Jeffersons. <laughs> Zietler, Zietler, Tom Willis from the Jeffersons and boxing. Eddie, no hitters, journalism slash reporting, Burger King, uh, conversations, Game of Thrones. Chief, MTV, The Work Schedule, SI Swimsuit Edition, uh, Breaking Up, View of the Future, Carl, Comedy Movies, U.S. Presidents, Madden, Chicago's Outsider, Perspective, and Old People. So I was going to say, like, I had social media on my list. I had, yeah. Like, I, I switched to Facebook. But is it, it the Facebook. young people complaining that made it bad? I don't know. No, like, it that's... feels more toxic. I think yeah. the internet in general is more toxic than it was 10, 15 years oh, ago. Yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. I think social media as a whole is downhill. If anything, it's like just as val. It's more valuable. We're addicted to the it. experience is downhill though. Yeah, was the experience ever really good? I thought yeah, I, I had was, more fun on the internet back in uh, social sure. media. Fucking yeah, even just the internet, e bombs world. And yeah, shit. I like, loved e bombs world. Got on there, fucking rotten dot com. Yep, you know whatever. That that one I that didn't was a like. Fucked up site. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, I have Snapple. Used to be in glass bottles. Fucked up. They changed it to plastic. Mm. Mm. Uh, jokes. I mean, I had PC, mm, uh, non PC jokes. Tricks used to be fucking shapes, and now they just changed it to balls. That was fucked up. I thought you actually meant like, like the physical act tricks. of performing. <laughs> yeah. Did you really? Yeah, they changed it to that. That's, yeah. that's heartbreaking. So you know that? they all look like kick, like colored kicks? Uh, Pretty. Yeah. 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 Go uh -huh. puffball. Okay. Exactly. And uh, I have The Rock. He was better as a wrestler. <laughs> his, the um, only movie I actually liked of his was the one with Sean William Scott. Uh, that would have been one of the worst picks of all time. Well, The all Rock. Right. I mean the rock. Is I picked him in the overrated draft. So if if you picked, I've lived on that hill. But he's not overrated. He is what he is. Like people just take yeah. him for. Yeah. If we did an uphill draft, rock would be like one one overall. Like people that have just like just keep going and going. Oh and yeah, going. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. gonna run exactly. for president. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Anybody was, else? I got I got a few. I got Disney movies. I feel like those were better. Like, oh, like Lion, Lion King, King yeah, Aladdin, yeah, yeah. that in like early '90s era. SNL. Um, that would have been a great pick. SNL. Oh, that's easy. Oh, yeah. that would have been an awesome, awesome, uh, awesome pick. pick. Hip hop music. I got rock and roll music. Um, then I had shopping malls, and then just like being a kid. I feel like when we were kids, you can go out in the woods with your buddies. You can ride bikes anywhere. So you can't do that. No unsupervised, more. and like your like, old niece has her own iPad. Playing, playing wiffle ball, playing all this stuff outside, like and just like being a kid. Like yeah. you're just being a kid, and now it's just like everyone's just. You know, they're inside and Fortnite and supervised, and it's just not. But if you have a kid, wouldn't you be like, all right, you should probably just, like, grow up like the rest of the kids that are in your peer group? Like, wouldn't you be raising a mutant if, like, everybody in the neighborhood's got the iPad and, like, you're the one family who's like, go outside and play with rocks? And yep. the kid's like, yeah. And then the yeah. kid gets a junior high, and it's like, who wants to play with rocks? And it's like, you don't know how to do this. Yep. Then your kid's I, I coming home crying, and then your big problems are, like, you have an you isolated do, yeah, freak. Sure, but that is, but if you were a kid, would you rather be sitting on an iPad, or would you rather be riding bikes, playing I'd rather have my parents making decisions that don't fuck with me. Like, put me in a position so I'm a normal person. That's not what I asked you. You're saying if I was a kid, yeah, yeah, would which I you, rather? Yeah, which do you think is more fun, and I would say probably more beneficial? I think is more beneficial, like not to necessarily, I don't actually agree with that at all. Like just going swimming with the crowd is not a great way to be in general. And um, so I don't, I just. So what are you saying is, I'm not clear I'm saying right being now. a kid, you, being a kid in like probably the eighties and nineties is better than being a kid now when you're just on your iPad the whole time, instead of like playing wiffle ball or riding bikes with your buddies. Like I just, I, I think kids had more freedom back then to like get in trouble and do more things and be more independent at an earlier age where now it's just like everything is super supervised everything is super everyone has to be super sensitive nobody's allowed to compete you have to you know like it's just participation you, like trophies. bullying is like i think the actual internet bullying is worse but like in-person bullying is just like oh you can't even say anything like just let kids get bullied yeah you a little can bit. fucking hit someone in the mouth back when we were growing up yeah like you can't so. play dodgeball because it's fucking bullying you know like stuff like that i do think and being you know a kid what? was better back in the day it must make you feel good though mr porno we were all old got old men who yelled at the clouds today, yeah so you're all oh what we were all old guys who yelled at the clouds yeah, saying get off our yeah. lawn yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I, you know something? I, I, I don't know if any of you are really parents here. Let me tell you something. In this Not world, it's difficult with a lot of things go on and the, the media around you. And, 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 you know, what do you think my father used to say to me? My father used to all constantly would say to me, when I was a kid, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's the way it's always been. That's the way it always will be. Mm -hmm. 
And it's, it, let me tell you something. In today's world, the one thing I will say, I think it's harder to be a parent than it ever was. If you're trying to do a good job with your kid and have your kid be, quote, unquote, normal. And, you know, it's difficult. There's mm-hmm. so many distractions. Yeah, I agree. I agree. He hasn't been as strict about it recently, but for a solid five-year stretch, the first thing my dad would make me do when I would walk into his house was hand him my cell phone. And it was the most anxiety would be, What? I didn't hear I that. would have to hand him my cell phone. And I like I appreciate it even right now, but like I fucking hated it. Could you imagine doing yeah, that many, to your son? Let me ask you something. How often do you think something like that happens? Not very much. No. What you yeah. just described. You should try it next time, Mr. Porter. Let us know how it goes. Yeah. No, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hand over my own cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Yep. Uh, well, like when I was in my 20s, you would make me hand over my cell phone as soon as I got to the yeah, last place. That's yeah. good. All right, Mr. Portnoy, yeah. thank you very much for jumping hey, I on. I enjoyed this. Thank you, Eddie. It was great. We'll I, see you again in a year or we so, appreciate Mr. Portnoy. It. All right. All right. <laughs> I'll be free. If I'm alive, I'll be free. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank All you right, for thank listening. You. That's it for today. Uh, we will see you all tomorrow.